What was that? Anybody checking on Bailey? Do you know what that made me think of, though? You know how they say that celebrities, the year they became famous, like you're stuck there forever? Or like the year something majorly. I've never heard that before. It's a psychological thing. Like the year when something traumatic happens in your life or there's a big change, a lot of you, like a lot of people feel stuck in that age. So for example, for us going through COVID, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of us walking around almost 30 and we all feel like we're still 20, what, 26, 27. I turned 27 in COVID. So we were 26 when I started. And like, you still have that mindset. You feel like you're 26. You're looking around at people having kids and you're like, Mm -hmm. but we're so little, like Mm -hmm. things like that. I do still feel like that. Yeah. And so it's this thing when, when trauma happens to you, your brain kind of gets stuck there. A lot of child stars come out and say that happened. Like Justin Bieber has Mm -hmm. said that uh, so many times. He feels like he's still 14 in a lot of ways and his brain sometimes functions like that. His team Mm -hmm. has said that too. Like sometimes they feel like they're working with a kid still. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much change happened, which reads as trauma Mm -hmm. when you're a kid. Um, and you get stuck there. And reading Britney Spears' thing, whatever that was, I was so confused. Yeah. But just the way it was written and like her flow of thoughts, I was like, oh my gosh. Like that's what it reminded it me of. It read like, um, it read like high thoughts. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I just, I kept wondering who tutored her. No, it read like a string of like nonsensical. It was just like a stream of consciousness that ended up in a note. Yeah. 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 It made me feel bad. Oh, totally. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I like, okay, as a member of the general public, I I realize that I have no right to know. Like, it's literally none of my business. Like, from afar i hope you're okay but i'm just like yeah (laughs) like but like is anybody checking on britney i hope they are like is she okay like do you remember like a year ago whatever it was when everyone was like free britney do you remember that i do the whole like free britney movement yeah are are we still freeing her or is she yeah well like now that she is like because it was from the conservatorship that she was in okay right which like she was under for a bajillion years but like now that she's not under that anymore, what happens? And next? she's like free. Like, yeah. What? What now? Yeah. Because if what you said is true, where, um, you know, when something traumatic happens in your life and you kind of end up like stuck in that time, mm-hmm. then like, if that's the case for her, and actually, it's interesting because she's talked about it. She's literally said, like, I got put under this conservatorship when I was, I don't know, however old she was oh. in her, like, 20s or, I, I, I honestly don't know, whatever age she was, she was yeah. young. um, And she's literally talked about it now, being like, oh my gosh, like, I'm experiencing, like, this for the first time and, like, getting to, like, go shopping and decide that I just want to go and buy this for myself. Like, oh. I've never been able to do that before and now I get to do that and, like, now I get to, like, go on a vacation and just go by myself and go do whatever. Like I've never been able to do that before. And like all like those kinds of things, you know? Yeah. So it makes sense when you say that you get stuck in that mo- that uh, time, time, time in your life. Yeah. In your mind that it, it that right. makes sense. That makes sense. It's like yeah. Israel. How's leaving that? Egypt. Go deeper. Explain. They were slaved for how many years? 40. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, sorry. I thought you meant in the desert in the desert. They were enslaved in the dessert. In the dessert. Yeah. <laughs> With all the they ice were, cream. <laughs> they, they, were, they were slaves for years. Like There were some of them that were born into it. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, you're free. Mm-hmm. And they still have slave mentality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty similar. Yeah. Well, it's like black people too, now that you say that. I, I had the convo with Priya the other day, and I was thinking that. Yeah. I was like, I, the, the similarities I see in the slave mentality of yeah. Israel leaving Egypt is the same I see in a lot of black people. I could so see that. Yeah. So to answer the question of what do you do? <laughs> you need Jesus. Oh, amen. Always. <laughs> Not that about the sounds that up. <laughs> anyway, someone check on Brittany. Yeah, please. And thank you. <laughs> Just concerned. I think about her and like Amanda Bynes and other people like mm-hmm. that. And I just make, it makes me a little sad. It's so sad. Yeah. 
it's so sad because I feel like they were made like to be like money machines, Mm -hmm. you know, for their managers and for their parents because they were both child stars. And it was their parents who were like pushing it all. Right. You know? And then when they reached like essentially the breaking point, now they just became another spectacle for public consumption, but just in a different way. Yeah. You know? So like you just moved from like one segment on TMZ to like the next segment on TMZ. Like that sucks. It does. I can't even imagine like, of course they're unwell. Now looking back, when I see that whole um, episode that Brittany had when she like shaved her head and stuff, I'm like, no, nah, that makes sense. Mm. That makes sense to me. Like imagine being under that much public scrutiny. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine and I don't want to. I no. hope I'm never under that level of scrutiny. Mm-hmm. Insane. That's terrifying. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. that being said, yeah. what's up, everybody? Welcome to <laughs> Big Girl Panties, the podcast where faith meets real life. And we dive into the heart of womanhood. Uh, we're your hosts. I'm Shayna. This is Priya. Hey, girl. Hey. And we invite you to join us on the journey of embracing the messy, the complicated, and the beautiful aspects of life through a Christian lens and put on our Big Girl Panties to tackle the tough stuff together. I nailed that. Did I wow. not? Yeah. Did I not? Okay. I kind of miss all the bloopers, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, there will be plenty. We still have to get you to the just end. mess up a few times, that'd be great. Thank you. I, I practiced really hard in the car on the I way. believe you. I did. I believe you. Yeah. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I saw this thing this week, mm-hmm. and I wanted to talk to you about it. Because, you know, the trend is going on right now where there's Golden Retriever and Black Cat, and mm-hmm. you have a friend. Mm-hmm. One is always one or the other. Mm-hmm. I feel like outwardly, I give very golden retriever and you give very black cat. Okay. Okay. But my hot take is that inwardly, I, and I'm going to say this, we both have golden retriever and black cat moments, both of us. But I would say I read a bit more black cat inwardly and you read a bit more golden retriever inwardly. (laughs) Thoughts. (laughs) Can I ask what that means? Yeah. Okay. So black cat, Okay, so the way that the trend is set up, I'll start with that. It'll be the first girl, and she's very girly. Uh, you know, she's wearing lighter colored clothing. Okay, very the much pink, so what we're doing right the now. The pink, the bows. Like, the- yeah. Like, I'm in, like, a fluffy white sweater. Priya's in a black hoodie. Mm-hmm. or I mean, it's a zip up, but still. Like, you're in mm-hmm. darker colors. Maybe her makeup is darker. And then the golden retriever is just like, lighter makeup, a bit more bubbly and like, eee. Mm-hmm. And the black cat is a bit more. Elle Woods. Who? Elle Woods. Elle Woods is Golden Retriever. Is Golden Retriever. Who's Black Cat? Mia Thermopolis. <gasps> okay, I was thinking that. I was like, but would it be Mia Thermopolis or will it be Lily, Lily Moskovitz? Oh, well, definitely Lily. Yeah. Betwe- yeah. Okay, but this is definitely. So, but we're talking but about the person's diaries. You have to, you had to be there. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, go get educated. Yeah. And then come back, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely Lily for sure. For sure. Black cat energy. Okay. Like black cats, not to say that they're more cynical, but maybe they're a bit. They're, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like I'm. Go watch the movie. You'll cat. understand. <laughs> yeah. So really, we just didn't answer EJ's question. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, true. I kind of get it. You kind of get it. Okay, okay. Have you seen Princess Diaries? No. We need to fix that. You haven't seen it for real? No. Why would I? How have I been You've been married, married to, you for to him and you haven't doctrinated three him? years and I didn't know that? Have you seen Boys in the Hood? No, I'm not married though. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that just could just be my answer from now That's on. That's your answer. I'm not married. Hmm. Anytime you guys are having a not domestic, I'm like, I'm not married. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But, but you, get the, you get the analogy. Yeah. One, one of you guys are golden retriever, meaning... Uh, Brighter, the pink, the frills, the bubbly, a little bit the more, a little bit more eccentric upbeat, and excited. The you sparkles. Know? The black cat is a little more moody, a little bit more quieter, dark, reserved. Yeah, kind of rebellious mm-hmm. in a sense. Ooh, okay, mm-hmm. the rebellious part does not read for me, but otherwise, yes. But could fit. 
That's what, that's yeah. what I'm getting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So mm-hmm. that is that. Um, thank you for that succinct definition. Could not I, have done it better we myself. Could never. At all. Um <laughs> <laughs> but still be here breaking down the plot of Princess Diaries. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, let me get back on track. <laughs> I think that, yes, outwardly, if people were to look at the two of us as friends, I immediately give Golden Retriever. You immediately give Black Cat. Hmm. Okay. But there's a lot of personality things about us mm-hmm. where I give so much more Black Cat and you give so much more Golden Retriever. Okay, wait, like what? For example, you're way more like bubbly and social and extroverted than I am. Yeah. I am not. I can But be, I'll do it while wearing exclusively black. I, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I I will be bubbly. I will be crazy. I have to be with people I'm really, really comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> don't talk to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, again, I'm bookworm. I feel like black cat gives like you're in some dusty bookstore somewhere. Hold yeah. up. And that's very me. Or like depending on your vibe, it could be like a bookstore. It could be like a music store. Yeah. It could be like a museum. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that would that that just reads very much so for me. I feel like a black cat is a tea girl. Golden retriever is like a coffee girl. Or a wine girl. You think so? Like a white wine. Red wine would be black cat, but I don't drink wine, so. Red wine like does give blackhead energy. It does. Champagne. Champagne gives, gives golden, golden retriever. retriever. I feel, see, this is why, again, I'm saying yeah. I feel like that would be you. Mm-hmm. Even I'm thinking of when, when you said vanilla was your favorite flavor because you could accessorize. That gives golden retriever. I'm sorry, it does. That's true. And I would never say that. I would just pick a flavor and be done. Like, you know what I mean? I would never think about That's accessorizing. That's so funny. Yeah. And I... Yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts though? Because I just feel I have golden retriever moments. You mm-hmm. definitely have black cat moments, mm-hmm. but I feel like I read more black cat and you read more golden retriever. Yeah. Okay. No, I feel like at first glance. Yes. Or like maybe not even necessarily first glance, like visually, literally, but like first impression, yes. like meeting, I would say maybe flipped. Maybe you're right. Mm-hmm. Wait, I'm right in which way? Sorry. That like, or uh, okay, aesthetically speaking, Mm -hmm. I think you give Golden Retriever a thousand. I give more Black Cat a thousand percent. And I think like maybe like watching in a social setting, you give more Golden Retriever and I give more Black Cat. Yeah. But I feel like when it comes to like like seeing like the warmed up like walls down just like existing Mm -hmm. versions of us yeah i think then like the golden retriever in me just like starts to thrive and my black cat comes out more yeah yeah i agree but is it with each other or is this just generally like i wonder because i think other people would describe me as golden retriever too but i don't actually feel like a golden retriever I just think I give golden retriever. <laughs> that made no sense. But no, I, you know I, I mean? do think that different different people can bring out that different side of you. Yeah. Because I think that like, I think you bring up both in me. Yeah. Like, but I that's also fair. think that that's because I bring out the black cat in you. Mm-hmm. So then my black cat is just like matching your black cat energy. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, <laughs> This is such a funny conversation for people who, again, are like, what? Yeah. But it makes so much sense. Yeah. But EJ brings out the golden retriever. In me. Oh, a million percent. But like, actually, where I'm like, can you just like, <laughs> like play with my hair? <laughs> like, pet my head. Yeah, literally. <laughs> what am I? You? Yeah. Black cat. You're a black cat. A million percent. There when is you're not with an Elliot, ounce of you're golden, golden retriever. retriever. You know? Elliot oh, is a golden retriever. Maybe true. Elliot is Elliot a golden, is retriever golden retriever to your black cat. Shout yeah. out Elliot. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But when you're with Elliot, you give golden retriever. More so. More so. But you're, you're still, still heavy black cat. Yeah. I'm learning so much right now. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> this is now an educational podcast. Can I be yeah. like a black lab? 
Ooh, mm. interesting. I don't okay, because if option. that's an option, that's what I would put myself as. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because dogs are just more like, ah, than mm-hmm. cats are. So I would then yeah. do that. I can switch really quick. I'll be like yeah. dancing around and being goofy one second. And the next I'm like unpacking some deep, dark something with somebody. Mm-hmm. And I'm like very solemn about it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm like that too, though. You are. But I'm just talking about in our unhinged versions of ourselves. Yeah. I feel like I can actually get kind of cynical and you could be all like very like, yay. Yeah. But again, with each other, with each other, with we each bring other. out the black cat in each other. Yes. Like if you're getting into your like black cat mood and you're, you're like, like down. you're getting like, you know, cynical and like whatever. I'm like, yes, like, let's go there. Yes, you are <laughs> like, always. You want to be cynical? Let's be the most cynical. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God. Yeah, word. that's what I think. Yeah, that's really funny. Yeah, just, I just wonder, thoughts I had. I wonder what people would say about us. Yeah. I think they're going to put me as golden retriever and use black hat. Hmm. But the squirrel brain in you always gives me golden retriever. Like, 100%. I don't have squirrel brain the way you do. Like, you can bounce Big around. Facts. Yeah. You bounce. I really don't. I want to resolve a topic. <laughs> the ADHD <laughs> <laughs> brings out the golden retriever energy. Yes, it really does. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the chronic illness brings out the sleepy black cat in me, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, That's no. Funny. That's oh, funny. I wonder I wonder just like what people would like label themselves as being, you know? Well, let us know. Like, do you think you're a black cat or a golden retriever? Mm-hmm. And what's your defining feature? Mm-hmm. I want to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that like one attracts the other. They have to. Mm-hmm. Imagine having two golden retriever friends. You're unhinged. You need somebody to like. Even if you look at your parents, I'm sure you could pick one that's a black cat and one that's a golden retriever. 100%. They, mine flip sometimes for my parents. It depends on the context. But one is always very black cat and one is always very golden retriever. Even yeah. with like siblings, mm-hmm. you have a black cat and a golden retriever. Okay, if we're talking about siblings between myself and my brother, yeah. I'm the golden retriever. Immediately. Like he gives and nothing same- but black cat. Same for me and my sibling. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have a choice but to be the golden retriever. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, let us know what you think. Because I just, I love talking about it. I, think I just want to analyze everyone in my life now. We can't right now. Using, we can't right now. We can't. But you know what we can no, do? No, I know. But it just makes me think about, like, every single person in my life and just be like, hmm. hmm. <laughs> you there. You know? Anyways, yes. moving on. Okay, since we're moving on, tell me about your BGP moment this week. Oh, my BGP moment. Okay, so it's not huge. Say, sorry, just now we gave very golden retriever black cat. Maybe I should take back everything I said. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I stand firm in my decision. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, my it's not it's not huge. It wasn't like it doesn't need to be life changing. Doesn't need to be. But I had a moment this week where it was with a work thing mm. and I was just feeling very um, kind of just like overlooked or like mm. not acknowledged. I think maybe is a better word to say um, or disregarded. Okay. Like my opinion or like my thought or whatever was just being like, okay, anyway. Um, mm. And it wasn't like this like major like catastrophic kind of thing but it's happened a couple times no that's a lie it's happened a lot of times <laughs> and anyways it kind of just is what it is because there's not really much I can do about it because it's not I'm just an employee like it's not my business but I did speak up for myself in the moment okay. to like a point where I felt like I could um which is part, half the BGP moment. And okay. then like the other half of the BGP moment is that like I didn't fully respond the way that like I actually wanted to. <laughs> you know why? Because my full, my full response that like I had like drafted and edited and ready to go in my head oh, I know you have would have given like major red flags. Like, okay. It would have given 
black cat like to the extreme, you know? Mm. Yeah. Okay. It would have been petty. Honestly, it would have been petty. Okay. If I had like really gone there. So tell me what held you back? Was was the Holy Spirit working on your heart? Like what happened? Probably. (laughs) Probably. Yeah. Honestly. Also advice from (laughs) EJ. But I just, I, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't have gone anywhere productive if I had, okay. to be honest. Yeah. And I know that even the response that I did give and like sharing my thoughts and stuff still isn't really going to go anywhere productive mm. just because I know that like the situation's not going to change. Like nothing's going to change. And I know that, but I also just didn't feel right in the moment, not addressing anything okay. at all. I don't know. It was a weird balancing thing, to be honest. Priya has a tendency to always feel like she has to say her piece. Especially when it comes to work. (laughs) Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I think it can be a hindrance. The thing is, I don't, though. Yes, you do. That's like one of your MOs. Not an MO. You always, you always no, want to get I, off. Like, like, I, I, like, you need to know how I feel. No, I disagree. I think I come home and I talk about it. Because it happened, and so I'm thinking about it. The majority of the time when stuff happens, I don't actually say anything about it like in the moment or like to the people involved in the situation where it would actually count. But I say it all to you (laughs) at at first, but then you don't and then you let it fester and then you end up at this moment of now I got to say everything that I've been feeling. But I've literally never done that. I've never just been like, this is all pent up and now I'm just going to like unleash. I think though, you guys are getting caught up in what unleashing looks like. Cause yeah, I don't mean going off. Yeah. But I mean, like like, you want to get your point out. Like you want someone to understand how you feel about a situation. Hmm. Cause you've never, and if you don't, sorry, Shana. And if you don't, you feel like, like you feel a sense of unresolved <laughs> or like a lack of, I don't know if closure is the right word. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not going to say you're wrong. Because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I kind of, I see where EJ is coming from because mm-hmm. I think about all the emails I've read over the years from you to bosses and <laughs> that's your version of unleashing i love having backup <laughs> when you just said that's never happened i was like playing it in my head i was like what which scenario can i say okay you know you're talking about you're talking about like the crazy boss that i had when we were living in hamilton i'm not just talking about that though i'm what talking about there? situations where i mean obviously i'm not going to air it but like situations where you have literally unpacked it whether it was in a letter or an email or or just like text v- text or verbally like you're like like these things all need to <laughs> sorry <laughs> all these things need to get addressed mm-hmm. and it's it's not unhinged in any way it's actually rather professional but you will hit every point like you won't miss hmm like at that point in time (laughs) no you are thorough queen pop off but like you're always 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 you're gonna hit them all like Mm. you collect them all you're not like i'm gonna just address this one but let the other five slide you're like since we're addressing (laughs) here you go but i don't think that's a bad thing at all Mm. and i think it's interesting that you know for your moment you're saying that you could have been more hardcore Mm-hmm. And you weren't. I also, though, I will say, I've admired about that you. Uh, whoa, I've admired that about you over the years. I really have, because I think you do a good job of communicating and saying, "This is the boundary. This is what I did. This is how you didn't 
measure up per se or like this is what I expected and I didn't receive that and this is why it's now caused a problem. You're so good at that and I genuinely have always admired that. So to hear you with this moment, I'm like, okay. Like I like to hear it because I would never. Hmm. I would go on in silence and suffering <laughs> forever and ever and ever. See, like, okay, so like I'm, I'm like taking what you said, mm-hmm. but I'm also taking what you said. And then I'm trying to find where I am in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle. I mean, you must be. We're talking about you. I hope you are. I'm literally in the middle. Yeah, I'm literally. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm in the middle trying to figure out where I am in terms of it, like, being, like, a good thing or, like, a strength. Mm-hmm. But then it also being, like, a negative thing and a potential, like, Do we think EJ said it as a spot. negative thing, though? I think you did. Um, Not negative. But I'll, okay, I'll, I'll ask you this, Shayna. Okay. Do you think that that trait that Priya possesses is necessary in every situation that she feels like she's being wronged or misvalued, or or do you think it's more important to differentiate which relationships you should do it with, and it matters, mm-hmm. versus do it in all of them? Because okay. I think my point was I don't th- I don't think your boss <laughs> needs that to me unnecessary, which is why I don't. Yeah. Wait, which is yeah. why you don't? But you have before though. You mean this time, like your BGP moment? This, this is why time, you yeah. didn't. Is what you mean? Yeah, because I just like you let it roll no off point. your back. Yeah, yeah. There's just no point. Um. Okay. So to answer the question. I don't think you need it in every situation and scenario, mm-hmm. but I've also watched you learn when to apply it more and more. Hmm. I think when way back when, like, I think you've always had the desire. I do think it's closure. I think mm-hmm. you've had the desire to feel heard and thought, you know, addressed well and all those different things, um, respected even all of that. But I do think that you have been, um, I think you don't need it as much as you used to. Hmm. And so I think you put yourself in situations to seek it out less and less. Do you know what I mean? And so, yeah, so that would be my kind of answer to that. But that's why I'm so curious about what made you think that that's why this is a BGP moment for you. Hmm. I think it's because <clears throat> now that we're talking about it and I'm thinking about it, yeah. I think it's maybe specifically because I was trying to find like that middle ground. Mm-hmm. I I do feel like it's worth like something being said here. Yes. Um. And. To be perfectly honest, not even so much the fact that something is worth being said here for my own personal well-being, Mm -hmm. but like, like professionally speaking, like job wise, I feel like something is worth being said, like for the good of the like business or the company or whatever. Um, So that to an extent, but like where's the line you know where it crosses into like me just wanting to feel heard for my own self right um and I think that like I think that I stayed on the other side of the line (laughs) yeah 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 because I I did want to say more a lot more but again there just wouldn't have been a point and like I may have felt better after but like for what yeah that's a huge maturity point though again to know so. that something makes you feel good and still decide but it's not necessary mm-hmm. and again that is something that 
in your younger years, you would have been like, well, since we're since I'm addressing something, may as well lay it all out. You would have. Mm -hmm, Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And I in my mind, I guess that's what EJ was kind of saying, too. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I I do think that that's really cool. And again, Mm -hmm. I like I have to affirm you in this. I, I do think that it's really great that you have always been able, like you stand up for yourself. I feel like you do. Sometimes it, you don't get there very quickly. Yeah. But you do get there. And I, I, I'm proud of you for that. Like, I don't know how else to Thanks. say it, but I'm proud of you for that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's funny though. I feel like when I get to the point of like actually being ready to stand up for myself, I feel like because it took so long to get, get myself to that point of being ready to stand myself, stand up for myself, it becomes really easy for me to like very quickly start to just like head downhill yeah. and it becomes like, like, and another thing. And yeah. Another thing. Yeah. yeah. And it becomes like not standing up for myself anymore. And I'm just like, <laughs> we're so. about to get petty. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. You said but some- not so much anymore. No, because we're growing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm proud of you. Slowly. <laughs> Slowly but surely. But surely. Yeah. Uh something else you said though. I probably made a face about it too, honestly. Cause you were saying you basically said, uh, well, I don't know if I needed to address it. I'm just an employee. And I mm. beg to differ. Like, I think that that mindset, and I think that's how you've ended up in situations where now you get to the petty point. Is because mm-hmm. you take on a lot of things. And I think we all do this where we're thinking, well, I'm just an employee. I'm just an employee. And you let things happen to you in workplace situations that shouldn't be. Yeah. And the idea of being just an employee is so diminishing of your value mm-hmm. and what you have to offer that mm-hmm. business or company. Um, at the end of the day, they're nothing without you. If all the employees were to say, I don't like how you're treating me and up and leave, what would they be left with? Mm hmm. So, yeah, don't never say, well, you know, I'm just an employee. You're not just an employee. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we have employees. They Mm -hmm. make the business work. Yeah. Right. And it's just, it diminishes your your value. Jesus didn't die for that. (laughs) He didn't. He didn't. (laughs) So, yeah. That's hilarious. That's my two cents. You're not wrong. I know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That was a good one. I feel... Yeah. Okay. I feel good now. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm really curious. What's yours? Um, mine was just me getting into something that I think I'm really passionate about. Mm. And so I've mentioned before that I'm very passionate about mental health. I'm very passionate about faith and their intersection. Um, but I'm realizing to the extent how passionate I am of that. Mm-hmm. And I've had the opportunity recently to do, I mean, I had told you yeah. some, I guess, I don't know what, I don't know what to call it. Like, I wouldn't call it teaching, but kind of like a presentation or a workshop type of thing on that TED intersection. Talk. TED Talk makes me sound cooler than I am. What, but like that's a lecture? The vibe. Talk. Call it a lecture? A tea talk. A tea talk. <laughs> Not the ed. Um, or an educational talk. Yeah. Okay. I guess it is an ed. Um, yeah. And it was, it was again, on that intersection between mental health and faith and being able to go do that in a church. I, I started off being really, really worried and I've done this before and I had a similar experience the last time, but I've actually done it a few times now um, where I go in feeling very worried about what I have to say and thinking that it's not really going to be appreciated and that I'm going to be telling people things they already know. And just really ragging on myself and being Mm -hmm. like, God, like, I don't really know. Like, I don't want to go up here and embarrass myself. Like, what if they know all this stuff? What if it's not helpful? And kind of mustering up the courage to do it and seeing the feedback and the way it was helpful or impactful and just me recognizing how many different avenues I can take Mm -hmm. on educating about mental health and faith. And it makes me so excited and it makes me just want to dive into it more. And I think I've always wondered about how can you be a minister in your work? Mm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, did I find my niche for that? Like, is this what it's going to be? And I don't know why am I feel like I'm going to cry. I don't know what it's going to be. Because that's actually so But exciting. like, 
I am excited Mm -hmm. because I want people to have good mental health and understand what God did for them. Like I want, I want there to be that intersection and Mm -hmm. I want to talk about it. And so one, I guess BGP moment, I'm just glad that I actually said yes and did it because I was really, really, really scared. Mm -hmm. And two, BGP moment, because I think I'm growing in this new way and learning like something that I can actually do and be helpful in. Mm -hmm. So I guess that would be it. That's awesome. Thank you. That's so cool. Yeah. I feel like it's so exciting when you find a way to like take something that you enjoy or that you're passionate about. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and like actually like do something with it yeah in a way that makes you feel like you know you're being productive and like you're contributing or you're helping or whatever and it's not just like this thing that like you like to think about or like look up or whatever on your own but it's like becomes like an outward kind of a thing like that's so exciting thank you I love that for you thanks friend yeah yeah that's oh, I love that for you. Thanks. Especially because I know you and I know that you were sitting there overthinking it. <laughs> like Yeah. To heaven. <laughs> before <laughs> to you heaven. went. Yeah. And did it. I was. Yeah. So it, it puts a challenge, of course. Because now if the opportunity comes up and I've talked to God about it and I've mm-hmm. said, Okay, this is something that I want to get more into. Mm-hmm. If he gives me the opportunity, I feel like I have to go for it. And I won't always feel like that. So it's it's kind of a challenge for myself too, to show up and be ready almost. I don't know. What would make you not want to do it again? I think the same things, a lot of self-doubt, worrying that people already know this stuff. I don't particularly like talking in front of people. Um, so there's the there's that piece where it's just it can be very overwhelming. Um and the introversion also doesn't help with that. I find that I, I end up being yeah. like, oh my gosh, after. But I, I think at the heart of it, it's worrying that what I have to say or even me myself isn't valuable enough. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But like based on the feedback that you got, mm-hmm. obviously. It was valuable. Proved that that wasn't true, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which And I cool. think it's interesting too because – I think we all know that like you can be told something like once or twice or three times or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if like that's an area that you're, you know, struggling in, for example, then like you need to be reassured. Right. Of things more than once. Or, you know, if you're struggling with like learning something, sometimes you need things explained to you more than once and so if somebody is showing up to a talk that you're giving on that particular topic they're there for a reason and so because of that what you have to say is gonna hit because like that's literally what they're there for yeah when you put it like that honestly that rings very true Mm. but it's so easy to get and this is the thing it's so easy to get caught up in yourself yeah and to forget that other people have the autonomy to choose to show up if they want to, to forget that. I mean, like in my case too, if, if God is giving me this opportunity, like it's above me, like he's, Mm -hmm. he's got it. I don't need to hold his hand Mm -hmm. and help him figure out what's going to happen. Like he's good. Um, and all those different things, but it's just so easy to stand in the middle of your own path and be like, Oh, there's a roadblock and it's totally you. Mm -hmm. But it's, I mean, that's a learning process. Yeah. How to make yourself not the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at that. <laughs> we never figure it out. <laughs> no, but we will grow. <laughs> I may always <sighs> be my own problem. <laughs> you know, the like, am I the drama? Yes. Uh, yes. You actually are. Yes. We all are. Yeah. Yeah. The answer to that is always yes. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, though. Thank I love you. that. That's exciting. I loved yours, too. Thanks. Okay. Okay, next topic. What do we got? Let me whip up my notes. I don't remember. You're down. It had to do with last last week. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. So last week we had a great conversation. Mm-hmm. I I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> we might be the only ones, but we thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed. It. Thought it was great. <laughs> Listen, this conversation was going to happen with or without the mic. So I yes, I did. Which enjoy. is literally the whole point. Exactly. <laughs> um. 
But we did something that we kind of briefly mentioned was Christian power couples. I don't remember exactly how we got to the conversation. We kind of started to touch a little bit on the idolization of marriage Mm -hmm. and Christian power couples. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to dive more into the idea of power couples, Christian power couples, and maybe how that in itself, like, is it idolization of marriage or is it idolization of ministry? And Mm -hmm. how, because I do actually think you could probably, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but I think you actually can have really cool Christian power couples and it's really healthy and wholesome and is good for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But I think that a lot of people are doing it wrong. Agreed. And so I want to talk about that. Like what, what's a power couple? What's a Christian power couple? Mm -hmm. Where are we going wrong? And like, should we be seeking power couple type relationships? Well, I think I think that in the same way that there is a tendency in like churches and Christian circles to idolize marriage as being like the pinnacle Mm -hmm. of relationships, like that's like the one relationship that we all have to like aspire to, you Mm -hmm. know, and all other relationships are somehow subpar. Um. I think that that is the same kind of energy that makes people think that like a Christian power couple has to or should look like one thing. Like to be a Christian power couple, you, you know, have to have a certain size of online platform and you have to, you know, be involved in like this 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 and this and you have to look like this and you have to like I'm just it has to look like one thing right Mm -hmm. or like be done one kind of a way um but I don't think that that's true I think one then we have to kind of define what actually is a Christian power couple because it's kind of a weird like, what even is that? That's just kind of, it, it feels weird yes. to say. I don't even like, say, like, what does that mean? And and I'm glad you said that because I think we should define what a power couple is or like what we understand it to be. Mm-hmm. And then let's talk about it in the Christian context. But yeah. even before that, why do you think marriage is viewed as that pinnacle? Because I agree. I think marriage is an absolutely beautiful thing. And I understand that marriage is supposed to be a reflection of Christ's love for the church. Like I get that. And Mm -hmm. I think with that in mind, I'm like, of course I want to experience that. Like that is the most beautiful analogy. Like it's so cool, but I don't think I quite understand why that has become the be all end all. Like you've arrived. It's, it's like this point of now, you know, you've made it now you know, your parents know that they actually did a good job with you. Mm -hmm. Now, like, I don't understand how it became that type of benchmark. Okay. My raw, unfiltered, unprocessed (laughs) opinion on that. Hit me. Is two things. One, I think that like so many other things, marriage has just become like a life mile marker Mm -hmm. that you're just supposed to hit. And you're supposed to hit by a certain point in time. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and two, I think the second reason is sex. Okay. I think that the narrative is that like sex is bad or wrong or whatever. Don't do it unless you're married. And then once you get married, then like all bets are off. Like have at it. But, like, those feelings are such, like, just, like, a human, like, innate human thing that, like, when you speak about it in a way that's kind of unhelpful and just saying, like, don't do it until you reach this point or until you've, like, checked this box off, um, then, like, now all of a sudden people just start to, like, try to 
What do I say? It because now it's like this like thing that people are like trying to get. Like, what am I trying to say? How do I describe what I'm trying to say? The reason for why it's the pinnacle is sex. And that's a strong reason why. Which takes away from why you should want to be married. Do we actually think that that's what the pinnacle is? I don't think marriage is the pinnacle. No, I don't think so either. But I do think marriage is a beautiful goal because... I think God told us to be fruitful and multiply, you know, like, and there are people who can't and that doesn't take away from certain things, right? But if you can't, I think wanting to be married is a great goal, mm. but wanting to be married for the sake of now it means just having have sex, sex takes away from the beauty of what marriage actually is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's tainted marriage and why it feels like this thing you're trying to reach because the actual relationship part, the love part, the reflecting the love of God part is not what people are thinking about in the forefront of their head. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I think the conversation about sex is just so much don't do it until you get married. And so because the context of that marriage relationship is the only space that you know we're taught that you can have sex it now just means that like people then are just like aspiring to like reach that level like i gotta like level up so i can get to that point because that's the only the only space the only relationship in which i can like have sex and like feel like i'm not you know doing something wrong but aside from that I'm taught that I can't. So you have people out here who are just like horny. <laughs> and so they're trying to get married <laughs> so that they can not feel bad about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's that's what I think. Interesting. I want to say I disagree. <laughs> okay. Because. One, in the grand context of society mm -hmm. keeping in mind not everyone is a christian not everyone believes in the idea of waiting until marriage mm -hmm. every like so many people are still like you see it all the time like women are like i want to be married i want to like get it da, da, da. and i mean of course me being a woman i see the woman side of it more i i don't really know what guys are saying but i people who are not Christian and who are of the world, let's say, like they, they, they don't have to wait or they don't believe that they need to wait. So it, it's like, is that really the driving force behind them wanting to get married? And but then, I think I'm talking specifically in a Christian space though. Okay. Because I don't actually think that, maybe I would change my mind if I reflected on this longer. But like, <laughs> again, off the top of my head, I don't necessarily think that outside of Christian spaces, marriage relationships are being idolized as like the pinnacle. I kind of do think they are. I think that it shows. I think that people view it as. How would I phrase this? Just the way people make such a big deal out of marriage in culture I, I do think that it's being idolized to a certain extent. Mm. I think that people respect you differently if you're married or about to be married. I think people, even just being single versus taken, I think people view you with more respect or even just they're nicer to you when you have a partner. Like people are more likely to say, oh, congratulations. I'm like, I'm so happy for you. And da, da, da. If you tell somebody like, oh yeah, I'm single. No one's like, good for you. Like people don't. It's like, why? I, I think that there is this different view and I don't know if it's this idea of because that shows that you're wanted or that shows that you've, again, hit a milestone, but it feels to me like there is something. But then the other reason that makes me feel like I disagree is I think about my own experience, like wanting to be married from the time you're a kid. Like so many 
kids do this. So many little girls do this. You're, you're dreaming about weddings and all these different things and having a husband and having kids and like having a family one day. I don't think we're thinking about having sex at that point in time, but it's Mm -hmm. something you just know you want. I think it's only as people get older and depending on what experiences they've had as well, thrown into the mix where it's like, oh, like, yeah, like sex is going to be a great thing. But also, I mean, how much of marriage does that even, like how much of your married life is taken up by that? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I think marriage or not marriage. I don't think I know if sex is the driving factor to people wanting to get married or even idolizing marriage. I think that it's a status thing. I think it makes you look good. And I think it proves that like you are worthy and wanted. I think that that's some of the things that I notice. I think I would say both of those things, in my opinion, both of those things are true in Christian spaces. I think outside of a Christian space i would say it definitely is more so like the social status basically that comes with being able to say you know i'm married whatever um but even then i don't know if it's if that's specifically marriage or if that's just like the social status or the um i don't know respect or acknowledgement or whatever of just like being in a long term relationship in general like I think about um, so many like celebrity couples, for example, who we like really <sighs> admire and like respect. Um, like Oprah, for example, her and her partner, they're not married, but they've been together for like, what, like 40 something years, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, but they're not actually married. So. Okay, here's where I would counter that. Yes, that's. But here's where I would counter because, and I know I I did bring up the conversation of what it looks like in Christianity and then in the world, but obviously we're doing this through the lens of Christianity because that's what we are. So mm-hmm. technically, she is married. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Biblically, she would be married. I, so I see what you're saying. Her desire to be in that type of relationship, that long-term committed relationship. And that's what, because that's what marriage is, a long-term committed relationship. Is that and, what marriage is? Is that the definition of marriage? I'm not saying it's a definition, but that's what's happening. It's a lot like you're in a long-term, eventually it becomes a long-term committed relationship or it's a relationship where the goal is to be long-term and you're committed to each other. But is that marriage though? I think marriage constitutes a lot more than that. Like, Cause that gives more just your living situation and the fact that like, it's like, yeah, this is my person. Mm-hmm. Marriage has so many layers to it. And again, I don't always feel very well equipped to speak on this cause I'm not married, but like what I understand about marriage, if it's something is a covenant, that is the deepest form of a promise between two people. And so what does that promise entail? It entails your whole life. So every aspect we could think about in our lives, that is all cumulatively the definition of marriage. It is doing, so yes, at its base, it's doing life with somebody and being committed to them long-term in, in every part of life. Now, is that like a dictionary definition? Probably not, but that's what I understand it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going somewhere else and I forget. So jump in and save me, please. I beg. I think, I think the fundamental question would be, what is marriage? If marriage is something created by God, like, like what separates the person from in the long-term relationship who says, I don't want to get married, but I want to live life with you mm-hmm. versus the person that says, I want to marry you. Because there is a clear difference. You know what I mean? And I think that is the fundamental question. Because I think from there, you can then answer all these other questions. But how many people actually know what the definition, like what, what is marriage? What I'm is it? i look up a definition. <laughs> you know what I mean though? What is marriage? 
the legally, <laughs> like, let me read, the legally or formally recognized union of two people as partners in a personal relationship historically and in some jurisdictions, specifically a union between a man and a woman. Or a combination or mixture of two or more elements. Mm -hmm. But that's, okay, my original thought, because the definition of marriage versus the purpose of marriage are those two different things. Because to me, the purpose of marriage is what I already said. It is to showcase the love that Christ has for the church in a way that we could probably the best way understand. We'll never fully get it. Mm -hmm. Like that's something we won't get to like glory or whatever, but that is probably the best way we could understand how much God loves us. So that's the purpose of marriage, I think. But the definition based on what this is saying, it's like a legal binding, which again, I used the word covenant before. It's a covenant between two people. You're promising each other mm -hmm. everything, like to, to join your lives together. So that's what I see it as in terms of definition and purpose. Yeah. I mean, so I think in terms of like why it's idolized, specifically, again, in a Christian space, um, I would say then, yes, I think that it a lot of it does have to do with um, like status mm -hmm. and again, feeling like you've you know, reached a certain point in your life and you get to check off a box that we're all told we're supposed to check off at some point, you know, sooner rather than later, <laughs> you know. But I think maybe in terms of what motivates people to get married, then maybe I would say is that combined with the whole like, oh, and then I get to have sex and not feel bad about it kind of thing. Hmm. Okay. Maybe maybe that's what I would say. Okay. I think it's now with the, the definition and the purpose that I've stated, mm -hmm. I think that it's become this pinnacle, especially in Christian culture, because it feels like you've reached, you've unlocked a new level of spirituality. You get God more. Interesting. And so okay. if you haven't reached that, it's like, oh, like, one day you'll get it. I so badly want for you to understand. Like it, sometimes it can feel like that. Like I haven't oh, unlocked so this new level of spirituality. I won't get certain things because I'm not like that spiritual level of maturity. And that's why I think we see a lot of times where women are so caught up on, let me learn how to wait well so I could prove to God that I've waited well and I'm spiritually ready and I'm mature enough to handle the husband so that I could get it. Mm -hmm. Your goal in that in no more is to be spiritually mature. Mm -hmm. Your goal is no longer to get closer to God. You're like, I just have to prove to God that I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying, I think that it's, it, it demonstrates like this certain level of spirituality almost, or just understanding. You know why that's crazy to me? Why? Is because Paul literally wrote like a whole like section of the Bible that like ended up in the Bible. Yes. He the made man the never got married. <laughs> he did. The man was single. Like. Yeah. He did say that. And I think it's interesting that people don't necessarily regard it as much, but I feel like that's a whole other conversation. Probably. It is. <laughs> it is a whole other conversation. And what I. Did I open a can of worms? It's okay. We'll, we'll open it. We'll reopen it another time. Yeah. We're not going to go in there. <laughs> but, but that, no, yeah, let's that, not. That let's is not. a whole, that is a whole nother can. That's a whole pod on its own right there. hundred percent. Um, but what I'm saying is, okay, so, I mean, we've, we've talked a bit about what we think about marriage, why mm -hmm. it's this thing. Um, even a bit about the idolatry piece, like a little bit. I, I think we could have many conversations about this, but in terms of the idea of a Christian power couple, mm -hmm. I had right. mentioned last time, um, that people say, I hear a lot, especially on social media, I'm trying to find my kingdom marriage. And then mm -hmm. that's when you brought up the term power couple. So what's a power couple? Hmm. Okay. I feel like I could describe the vibe <laughs> of a power couple, but what is a power yeah, couple? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, well, when I think of it, 
like, just like generally speaking, mm-hmm. I think of it, um, I'm trying to like pick like the perfect celebrity couple to use as an example. <laughs> they could which, be fiction. Which Michelle Obama actually, and Barack Obama. That sure. is my power couple to sure. end all power couples. I do want to be them. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, but go ahead. I feel like actually now that I'm thinking about it, the fact that I just sat here and tried to find a celebrity couple to use as an example says a lot. Is actually the point. Yes, I feel like we think of it as like a couple that's like you know well known and has a ton of influence and has a you know large platform whether that's like you know in terms of social media or you know business or whatever or like in the christian space like ministry um i don't know why i put attitude on that word but I ministry did. <laughs> maybe i meant what i said i don't know we'll find out later um and like presents their relationship as being at a certain level of spirituality level of yeah but also just like um health like presents their relationship as being at a certain level of like you no know, like we're like good <laughs> you know okay like yeah we're healthy we communicate well we yeah. go on date nights all the time yeah yeah like we could you give you advice like and you could listen to it and take yeah kind yeah. of thing um i think wealth mm-hmm. probably plays a factor into what people would consider as being a power couple yeah um i think aesthetically speaking we put a lot into that. Um, yeah. Okay. I would almost argue. No, I don't know if this is true. Never mind. I take it back. It's not true. I was going to say. People do that. You know, I was going to say that I, I would say that like if you and like your man or your woman or whatever like presented yourself like aesthetically as being like at a certain level. Yes. Then you could not portray like any of the other things that I mentioned, but people would just like assume that you're a power couple. No, it would give power couple. You coordinate you think outfits. That's true? I on social media. Cause yeah, you, okay, you yeah. coordinate outfits and you slap on a caption, like oh, love my baby. Like he did da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everyone's going to be like oh, power couple. Like goals. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's interesting that you, cause you kind of started to think of power couples and a few immediately came to my mind of Christian power couples. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them were actually, pastor duos mm. like i'm thinking about like mike and natalie todd i'm thinking mm-hmm. about um what is it? pastor robert is his name bardu badu and his wife is her name taylor i forget um I th- like I people like it. that you would know if i showed you i think about okay. the perrys mm-hmm. um that's who i thought of yeah mm-hmm. yeah the perrys for sure shout out preston and jackie if you're mm-hmm. listening no, i'm kidding <laughs> Okay, but I, I, think, uh, I think about those people, right? Mm-hmm. And here's what I would say. It's funny because they give Christian power couple, but they also give kingdom marriage. And in my head, those are two very separate things. Okay, I think the that. aesthetic of it all is what makes people say it's power couple. Mm-hmm. I think the idea of a kingdom marriage is where you are both intentionally encouraging each other in your purpose to minister for Christ. It doesn't always mean that it's the exact same ministry. I -hmm. think, I think that when you're married, your individual purposes do get come together in some way, but I think that you need to manifest it in different ways. I don't think that, you know, just because God called you and EJ together. Now, all of a sudden you guys have to have this one thing that you do Mm -hmm. together and you can't have your separate ministry to what EJ does. Mm -hmm. And so I think kingdom marriage or a kingdom-minded marriage, I should say. I think that's actually what it should be called, a kingdom-minded marriage, okay. where in your marriage, you're being intentional about seeking the kingdom. That's what I think it should be. Okay. And that would look like, how are we glorifying God in our marriage? How am I, as your wife, encouraging you to pursue the, you know, the, the purpose that God has for you? How am I encouraging you when you get downtrodden about it? How am I helping you to be excited about it? You're doing the same for me. How are we looking for opportunities together to minister to people? 
whether that be in a philanthropy perspective or ministering in a church, like your local church. It doesn't have to be in a leadership position even. It could be like working with your youth group or it could be just opening your home for people to come and say, you know what, this is a safe space. I could come and share about what I'm going through. I can talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like I I think that that's what I view a kingdom-minded marriage as. Mm -hmm. You are seeking the kingdom together. Okay. And so Christian power couple has that undertone. We, we all know that they must be doing things to, to further the kingdom or to like, you know, hasten the return of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we know they- like, m- like as in like we assume it? We assume it. Okay. And I think they all start off doing that. But I think the aesthetics take over and that's what turns it into, in my mind, a Christian power couple. I'm no longer really seeking out exactly what their ministry is and what what they're sharing. I'm more interested in them. I'm interested in their relationship. Because I was going to say, to me, the line, Mm -hmm. like where it gets blurry, is when like it starts to give celebrity. Yeah. Which, to be fair, I don't, I'm all over the place with this because I think God puts people in certain positions Mm -hmm. for his glory. And so I don't think if you've reached a certain level of stardom or where a lot of people know who you are, I don't think that's innately bad. No, I don't think so either. I think if that's your driving force and that's what you really care about, then that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been speaking a lot though. (laughs) I'm like actually getting tired, so... (laughs) And you know when I'm doing this, that I have thoughts. My hands go like this. That's and they've been name. going like this. Mm-hmm. I'm such a hand talker. Okay, go for it. Say something. <laughs> like, girl, I'm tired. No, you were like, you were on such a roll. And then all of a sudden you just like, boop. The black cat. <laughs> what just hey. happened? Her like, battery died. I know it did. It actually died. I just need, I need you to reflect back something so I can continue. Because, okay, okay, no, I'm back. I'm back, actually. Here's the thing. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> that was an intermission. Um, I said all that to say that I, I, I mean, I gave you my definition of what a Christian or a kingdom-minded or kingdom marriage is versus a Christian power couple vibe. But I think the reason I shut down is because I'm like, what do you think? We've only given my definition of this. I think that's where I was kind of like, okay, I don't know what to say right now. Because, mm. I mean, what is the purpose of what we're talking about? Like, I want to know, I want to know what is it, is, should we be seeking kingdom marriages? Should we be seeking to be Christian power couples? What's the healthy medium? Or is it one or the other? And how does that glorify God? Like, that's actually at the heart of what I want to know. So I think knowing what you would define it as is helpful. I mean, I think if you're somebody who is pursuing God and um, the purpose that he's given you, like actually, then I don't See, this is where I have commitment issues with my opinion because what I'm about to say sounds like a hard absolute. And I have hard Say it. <laughs> no, say like, it I have with a hard your time. Chest. I have a hard time like saying absolutes because I know that there's always exceptions. And then I feel the need to be like, let's talk about the exceptions. And we will talk about the exceptions, but I think it's okay <laughs> to pick a standpoint first. Okay. And keep in mind, like, these things are subject to change as we grow and mature and learn. So say something. Oh, totally. My opinions today may not be my opinions. By the time this comes out. <laughs> by Literally, like an hour yeah. from now. Who knows? Um, okay, but I was going to say, I think that if you're someone who is pursuing the Lord and the purpose that he has for you, that he's made you for, um, like, like truly, truly both of those things, then I don't know if you would end up in a marriage with somebody who's not doing the same thing. Yeah. I don't know why you're acting like that's such a big thing to say. Like that makes sense. Because I'm literally thinking of every example in my head of, (laughs) Oh, okay. 
<laughs> are these exception examples or yeah. are they the rule examples? <laughs> no, I'm thinking of all the exceptions in my head right now. Let's keep in mind though. And I, again, I don't know what exactly is going on in your head. So I could be off base, but I think that even if we are pursuing our purpose in Christ, like obviously we're not God, we're going to mess up. We're human. Mm -hmm. And I think if we mess up and we end up in a relationship, a marriage even, where it's not reflective of what God is kind of like, dang, she almost had it, but it's okay. I can still make it work. Like I'm still going to cook. Like mm -hmm. That's what God's going to say. Mm -hmm. And so he, I think that's why we get exceptions and we can think of people because they were seeking the Lord, but maybe they like tuned out a little bit that because I really like this guy or because, um, you know, this just feels right. I've been single for so long. This must be it. Like there's different things that could happen that might kind of stray you a little bit, but that doesn't mean that God can't work. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's why we end up with so many exceptions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that could be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think. Like, what was your original question? Great question. Um, oh, I was asking. I was asking. <laughs> squirrel. Uh, I was asking what your definitions are for a kingdom marriage versus oh, yeah. a Christian power couple. Yeah. I mean, I think that like a kingdom minded marriage. Um can be that on a grand scale with a large platform and on a small scale with absolutely none whatsoever. I don't think I understood that. Like in terms of like, for example, being in the public eye. Okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Whereas I think to be a power couple, so to speak, you have to be enough in the public eye that it's other people watching you deciding that in their opinion you hit power couple status you've hit power couple status yeah okay do you know what I mean I do and that's why I say I feel like the line starts to get blurry when it starts giving celebrity mm -hmm. because then there's like an amount of like this is for public consumption or like entertainment if you will it's giving influencer. Yes. Me kicking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I, what I was actually. on my head right there was a picture of Victoria Beckham laying on the couch with the one. <laughs> 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 um, and I'm glad you brought up the word influencer and in all this mm -hmm. because what I was thinking and where my brain was going as you were talking is I think if two people are walking in their purpose in the Lord and they come together in that like beautiful situation. And again, all these things are so beautiful. And so I think whether or not you're being a Christian power couple, or it's just this like genuine, like, I don't care who's watching. This is my marriage and we're making it centered around Christ. I think, I think both can be beautiful and both can be used by God. Mm -hmm. I really truly believe that. I agree. Um, but I think that you will inadvertently, if you're both coming together into that covenant with the purpose of we want to glorify God in our identities, in our joined identity and or our joined purpose, I guess I should say. Our identities in Christ, our joined purpose and the way in which we move about the world in our marriage, you're immediately a power couple, immediately. But I think you're that regardless of if people are watching or not. But that's how exactly many what I'm saying. Or not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so that's why I'm saying I appreciate that you brought up the word influencer because I think that's where we started to get the ick with mm -hmm. the term Christian power couple. 100%. Because, yeah. and I think I would say you also get this ick with the term Christian influencer. I don't think mm -hmm. I get the ick as much with that. I think you do. I 100% get the ick. Yeah, where because it almost feels, I mean, and of course, I'm trying to reflect what I think I'm seeing in you. So cut me off at any point in time, I beg. But I, I think you're seeing this idea of it feels performative mm -hmm. and that makes it feel kind of yucky and toxic. Mm -hmm. Um. But I, I guess my position is, I think if your purpose, I think you should go in with the purpose of having a kingdom minded relationship. I don't like the just term kingdom relationship because I think people get confused. Like it just sounds I don't weird. know what that is. Like, right. Well, I, I, what I, is that? What does I, that mean? First, I, I, 
at first I thought it meant like they're saying this is the person I'm going to heaven with, but I don't really think but that that's that not makes even, sense or is really no biblically sound. So it's mm-mm. not. It's not. So I. That's why I am choosing to say a Christian or sorry, not Christian, a kingdom minded relationship where it's kingdom centered. It's Christ centered. You're doing everything together in the service of the Lord for His glory. And that, again, I I cannot stress how beautiful I think that is genuinely, truly from the bottom of my heart. Like, I hope I have that one day. But I, see, I lost my train of thought again. I I do think that if you end up being viewed in in the eyes of the people around you, uh, I'm just going to say your circle of influence. Your circle of influence could be like 200,000 people Mm -hmm. or it could be 12 people. Mm -hmm. Pop off disciples. (laughs) It could be that, right? And Mm -hmm. Either way, people will view you as a Christian power couple Mm -hmm. because the Lord is powerfully moving through you for his glory. Like, how can you not view that as powerful? But if if your idea is, I want this to become my source of income. I want this to become my, the way people now recognize me. I want this to be the way I get onto brand PR, like whatever it is. Like people have weird ways of thinking with this stuff. I think that's when it causes a problem. Mm -hmm. I also feel like I'm just talking a lot again. No, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I I think that I would add, I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with um, like, how do I phrase this? For example, like if you're paid to do like a certain like speaking engagement, let's say. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. But again, I think it's for me when it crosses the line and I start to question your motives and your integrity um, and it starts feeling like a show or like entertainment or like... um. Yeah, like like celebrity, like we're doing this to like keep up with like the demand of public consumption. Cuz like that's how it is with like celebrities, I think, you know, like sorry, I keep hitting the microphone. Um that's how I think it is with celebrities sometimes where they realize that like the public wants them they want to know more about them and so we just kind of like eat up like all these like bits and pieces that we can like grasp to put together like a picture of what we think their life is like so then we then think that we know them um and that's what i really don't like i i don't like when it starts to feel like that yeah um so yeah, I just Yeah, the idea of a Christian power couple is just weird to me. I think just point blank. It's weird to me. I just think it's strange. Yeah. I don't think any of it exists. I think it's all cap. I think it's all performative. I think if you love Jesus and you're kingdom minded single, then your marriage will be kingdom minded. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think going into relationships thinking we should be this is it's it's real. But I agree with that. But I also think that if you are single and again, you are like a kingdom minded person, you know, and you're again pursuing God and like the purpose that he's created for you and like all those kinds of things, like you can have the same amount of um, uh, influence, in, influence it, 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 good in the good way. I mean, yes. um, the same amount of influence, the same amount of impact, the same amount of like all those kinds of stuff. Um, but I think that like, again, people's perception of you might be a little bit different or publicly speaking, like the, the public might not elevate you to a certain level of celebrity because you're not married. And in that there's another manifestation of like the idolization of marriage. Right. Whereas we see with like these couples I think part of the reason why they reach that certain level is because they're married. Disagree 100%. You don't think so? No. 
also I should just add I'm not saying that that's the case for all of these like Christian couples with large platforms that we see no I absolutely think, not I, I actually I think realistically if you look at power couples I actually don't think it's an equal level of power that we consider power couple what do you mean what I mean by that is let's take Mike Todd and his wife for example mm-hmm. Natalie. if they were if Natalie if they were not married Mike Todd would still probably be Mike Todd and we probably wouldn't know who Natalie is okay take the Perrys for example mm-hmm. I don't think Preston would be as big as Jackie but I still think they'd be doing their own things. So I think I think the whole power couple conversation, I think it's one hundred percent a a entertainment thing that people put on that couple. I actually don't think it has anything to do with the couple. I don't know about that, but pre- I feel like that's I, kind of what we were saying, though, because we established that it's it's almost an aesthetic. Yeah, I I think that the the perception of power couple is something that the public puts on those people. But I think then when that happens and you now have this size of platform, you now have a responsibility to decide, okay, to decide like, what am I going to do with this? Like how responsible am I going to be with this? Am I going to like keep a level head or I'm going to, am I going to let this go to my head and like lean into it? But that still has nothing to do with the couple and power couple like that is like the fact that you we can't define what a power couple is but we can just say it's a vibe we know the vibe of it but we don't know the definition means it's something (laughs) it ain't real okay but okay so hang on go back for a second because you said something interesting earlier do you think that both people in the couple have to have the same level of like notoriety. public notoriety in order to then be a power couple. power couple. I feel like you already answered that though. No, I I don't think. Hold on, let me let me, let me word it. So I just want it, you to clarify. Let me, That's let, me, all. let me clarify as clear as possible. I do not think that. To be a power couple is something that the couple does. I think it's something that people will put on that couple. And I think it is exclusive to celebrity internet fame. I think, I think it is a, is a, is a aesthetic, as you guys said, it's a brand. It's a, appealing thing to look at it's goals <laughs> i would agree except modify one thing and i don't think it has to do with the internet or social media i think it's just how humans are we like yes. to glorify things we like to put things on a pedestal mm-hmm. we're always looking for like a, a counterfeit to worship mm-hmm. and so i think the idea of a power couple as a general statement is our counterfeit for what truthfully marriage is supposed to be. And so it doesn't, it could happen again. Like I said, it can happen in your local church where a couple, everyone's like, oh my gosh, like they're like, they're it. Like ask them everything. Yeah, da, 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 da. It could happen in your, your group of friends. Like you could have like three married couples that are all friends. And there's going to be that one couple where the other two couples are like, oh yeah, go them. Like, I think, I think it could happen at any point. I think a real power couple, you will never know publicly interesting i think a power couple is something exclusive between the couple and god but again oh sorry you go no go ahead I was <laughs> oh i was gonna say again that's why i said i think innately if you are both walking in your purpose that god has for you and encouraging each other in that purpose you are immediately a power couple because the power of god is moving in that marriage mm-hmm. so And I think I should also run this back and explain a part of the reason I did want to talk about this is because, again, being in my single girl era, I think there's I'm seeing a lot of messaging where women need to be seeking out a power like a Christian power couple type of marriage. 
Mm-hmm. And it is getting confused with that kingdom centered, kingdom minded thing. And so with us establishing what a Christian power couple is versus a Christ centered marriage and all the in between, that's kind of to say, be careful about what you're seeking for. Do you know what I mean? Like, be careful that you're not entering a situation, a relationship because, oh my gosh, he serves in all these ways. He does this. He does that. Man of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it might look like that aesthetically. And then you enter that situation expecting to be a Christian power couple. You do the whole bit. You get married and then stuff gets real. And it's like, you, you might still present as a power couple on the outside. It's an aesthetic. Anyone can achieve an aesthetic. Mm-hmm. But on the inside, what is actually happening with your personal relationship with the Lord? And so, yeah, I, for myself, I'm trying to be very cautious about what I'm seeing and how I'm interpreting it because I don't, I don't really want to be in a Christian power couple situation, but I would love to be in a relationship where I'm pursuing Christ, he's pursuing Christ. And it ends up being this beautiful mashup of like just love for Jesus and his his word being glorified and like all of that stuff. But it's very easy to confuse one for the other or think that they're the same thing mm-hmm. and pursue it um, wrongly. I agree. I think that like, I think that maybe what people are pursuing is... Um, the aesthetic or the perception. Mm. But like you said, pursue the, not even, I I don't want to use that word, but like the thing that you want is the status. They're chasing status. Yeah. But I'm saying the thing that you want is like the, (laughs) sorry, (laughs) the tone was off there. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. I didn't realize. No, not your tone, her tone. You oh. were like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, tee Oh, my bad. <laughs> Just sassing you back a little bit. No, I'm not. I'm kidding. sorry, guys. I didn't, I didn't mean to ruin your moment there. No, Go that's ahead. funny. Um, no, the thing that you want is, is the healthy relationship. Yes. The, the, the Christ-centered relationship, marriage, all that kind of stuff. Yes. And if that's actually what you're wanting, what you're looking for, then like what God does with that is what he does with that. Yes. Again, and whether it's like he might bring you're, you to you're your fame. impactful with twelve people, you're impactful with you know twelve thousand people, twelve million, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I think that what you don't want is to be pursuing the aesthetic and the status, and you know have the like stars in your eyes of like, you know, we need to be having a, you know, I want like the the Christian power couple, like the kingdom minded marriage, oh, like whatever that means, thinking that like this is what it looks like which is just not true i also disagree with you with the idea that an actual power couple you'll never see like you'll never know about them kind of thing i don't think that's true i think that you might know less about them because they don't simply allow you to have access to that much of their personal lives. But I don't think that that means like what you're saying that you just like, you're never going to hear about them. You won't even know who they are. I don't think that's true. It's because the, the actual power that I'm speaking about is not something, it's not the same power that we speak about when we talk about power couples. Explain. It's a marriage thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm talking about power couple in the sense of like we as a married couple, we know how to go through life together. We are powerful as a married couple. Our kids will see it. You know? The people close immediate, to us. Immediate immediate in our, like, in people our, in our yeah. circle will see it. When I say no one will see it, I mean in the sense of like public. <laughs> I don't believe so. Okay, that With that explanation, I agree with you. Hmm. Yeah. Like, to give an example, I think about, like, maybe to use the Perrys as an example. Like, they they both have fairly large platforms. 
and you know we like we know who they are you know you know of them you don't know who they are so that's what i meant we know of them yeah but that's the point we don't know who they are which is why i say you'll never see it yeah because even we, them you consider a power couple i think in that sense maybe i would um but it's not because they're out here like you know trying to portray themselves as being like christian relationship gurus you know they're they're pursuing like when i look at them with what they allow us to see i see them pursuing the lord and the purposes individually that they have um and that's awesome and then as far as like their personal lives go and their actual marriage like their own relationship and stuff like that like like that's not for us mm -hmm. as it should be like that's not for public consumption and i don't really see them putting it out there like that but because we know that they're married i think we just automatically would think of them as oh like yeah they're a christian power couple whatever but i think that we think that because we see them individually pursuing the Lord and their purpose in the Lord. And I think that that is a really great thing. And that is what I think you can be doing on a large scale or a small scale. I do not think that you should be pursuing or wanting a marriage thinking that it needs to be grand or that it should be this like grand thing yeah. does that make sense yeah i think we unpacked it that's my thought we did i yeah um i guess the sorry i'm to just say one final thing i two words keep coming into my brain or i guess phrases one being the word byproduct and the other being that verse and i don't remember where it's taken from but again by your fruits you shall know them mm -hmm. i think that byproduct of pursuing christ whether in your singleness or in a marriage or a relationship whatever no i'm going to say singleness or marriage because until you're married I, I personally think you're still single um facts. so big facts in your singleness or in your marriage a byproduct product of following christ is power you become powerful satan is terrified of us when we're following christ so there is power in that and then by your fruits, you shall know them. People around you are going to recognize that power, whether they choose to label it as you being a power couple or just a Christian minded couple or just saying there's just something about them in your singleness that could happen too. They are just a powerful person mm -hmm. in, in what they do and what they say and how they speak. It is because Christ is in you and, and the fruit of the spirit is being shown. Mm -hmm. So to the girl who, like me again, is still single. Um, just keep cultivating your fruit. Like, let yourself pursue Christ. If that is His will, He will allow people to be in proximity to you that are also pursuing Him. And then, yeah, maybe that's going to bloom into something super amazing and beautiful and and, and Christ minded and and kingdom minded. But I don't want people getting caught up in the worry of. And this is how this stemmed off from last week. So to tie it all up in a nice little bow, um. I don't want people being worried that if I choose the wrong person, then we won't get to be a power couple. If mm -hmm. I choose the wrong person, then we're not going to this. We're not going to that. Because one, if you're pursuing Christ, he will, he will walk you through that. I know he will. And two, let's say you mess up. Let's say you didn't listen to him very well. God is the God of, like God, I always say God is the God of Uno reverse. <laughs> he, he can switch that on you so quick and he can say, it's okay. You know what? Maybe this isn't the ideal thing. Maybe had you listened to what I said in this situation, you would end up with so-and-so rather than so-and-so, but it's okay because I can still work all this for my glory. And, and in that, you will, it will still be beautiful. Do, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's all. Well, I think if he's a redeemer, then he's a redeemer. He's a redeemer, period. period. Point blank, period. Yeah. Yeah, and it's cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's not for one thing, but not another thing. Yes. If he just is, then he just is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Should we get back into Ask your question, Priya. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. This has 
nothing to do with anything. This is so unrelated. It's not even funny. Okay. I but I need less. to know your opinion because EJ and I were debating this earlier in the week. Okay. And I just need to know before we like get into our boy briefs question. Okay. Because it was a hot debate. It, I get basically, is this a boy brain Versus girl thing brain. versus girl is brain. Is this a boy brain thing versus a girl brain thing? Is this like a or is it just Priya? Is it just me? <gasps> okay. Is it both? Who knows? Hit me. Okay. So I was sitting on the couch and I asked EJ if he could turn the kettle on for me because I wanted tea. And there was already some water in the kettle, but I knew that that water was there from like whatever, like five days ago from the last time that I had tea. So I specifically said, can you dump that water and put fresh water in the kettle Mm -hmm. and then flip it on? And he's like, why? It's water. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, but it's been sitting there. It's been sitting there. It's been sitting there for like several days now. And he's like, yeah, but what difference does it make? It's clean water. It was already boiled the last time you had tea and you're about to boil it again. So like it's perfectly fine, clean water and the kettle has like the lid on it, you know? So it's not like there's like things falling in pathogens, the water. Yeah. I was like, yeah, but I just it's just been sitting there like dump it and just put in the fresh water, you know? Okay. But I also understand his point that like it was boiled before. It's about to be boiled again. Like there's nothing like dirty or like yes. overtly problematic. Overtly <laughs> problematic. <laughs> about this water in the kettle. Okay. There's nothing covertly problematic about it either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's right? Mm. Day is draining me. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, I and will for say. For anyone listening, I want to know your opinion. Yeah. Too. Weigh in. Pick a team. <laughs> team Priya or Team EJ. I. Here's the thing. I, I think at first I'm confused because I'm trying to think of what I would do, but then I realized I am such a big tea person that I've never had this problem. Yeah. <laughs> so- <laughs> So I don't no, and know I knew you were going to say do. that. I knew you were going to say that. There would never be a point in time where there's been water sitting in your kettle for five days because there's just a constant right flow of fresh water going in that kettle. Yes, for you. Yes. Um, but here's what I would say, because I wouldn't I wouldn't consider it a problem in terms of like you the water's gross, but I'd be more like Ugh, the water's stale. Because you know the vibe when you leave a cup of water out mm-hmm. for a couple days and then you have a sip of that water. Like, let's say it's in a carafe or something. It tastes stale. And I just don't want that flavor in my tea. So for that reason alone, I would dump it out. But not because it's like, not because it really needs to be dumped out for any other reason than the fact that it's now stale. That's how I feel. That's not what you felt. No, that is how I feel. I literally said, I, I realize that this water is not now all of a sudden like teeming with <laughs> teeming. bacteria and like Ew. disease. Like, I know that. That gave me the ick. Teeming? Yeah. But what are it's you a been biology sitting teacher? there. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm just having a moment. <gasps> I stopped taking science class after. What is it, grade 10? You don't have to take science class anymore? Yeah. Oh, for real? Yeah. I did biology, chemistry, and physics. You would have thought I was going into Me? bioscience. Absolutely not. Wait, bioscience? Clearly, I'm an arts girl. I don't even know if that's a thing. Case in point. No. I took no arts classes, and look at me now in the arts. I oh, I was the complete opposite. I went to school like I was trying to be a woman in STEM. No. Okay. I was... No. <laughs> they said it's no longer mandatory after grade 10. I said, great. I love that for you. Mm -hmm. I did. I did biology, chemistry, physics, and then I did calculus and advanced functions. For what? Because you're an overachiever. Yes, this is very true. 
anyway that's and, literally that, yeah actually that's like <laughs> the end <laughs> bye guys thanks for listening uh, that no was, but that's what I meant though it's because it's been sitting there and it's just it's because it's stagnant it's just stagnant. it's just stale yeah it's but just, wouldn't boiling it rejuvenate the stag <laughs> No. Why does that sound like it could be the name of a bar? Rejuvenate this tag. I don't know why. <laughs> no. Or a band, not a bar, a band. It sounds like it could be the name of a band. A ba- yes, a band. I meant to yeah. say band. I don't know why I said bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. That's not how that works. That is. That's like, that's like if you take a cup of tea that you made three days ago. And then just like stick it in the microwave. No, it's not. How not? Because you are boiling it in a kettle. <laughs> so you're talking versus, about from a cleanliness versus standpoint. heating it up with UV rays. No, but you're talking about that's that's you talking from a cleanliness standpoint. No, I don't even think the microwave gets it as hot as the kettle does. It doesn't. Exactly. Well, no, you can boil water in a kettle. I mean, in a microwave. Okay, he, forget this conversation. I have a. Sorry, that sounded so rude. Uh, I have a different Forget one. It. Move right along. Because I, I think, I don't like when people make a cup of tea and they put the cup of water in the microwave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to talk um, about flavor? Microwave yeah. flavor. Yeah. I'm like, are we good? Are you going through something? It's like drinking in the bathroom. Ugh. Never. 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 Jail. Jail Mm-mm. time. That's disgusting. Yeah. That's up there with peeing in the shower. Right up there. Filling up your water bottle in the bathroom sink. Guys, I could be, no. I could wake up so parched that I'm dizzy and I will drag myself to the kitchen. It wouldn't mm-hmm. even cross my mind to take a sip of water from the tap in the bathroom. Like, I could be dying and I don't think I'd do it. <laughs> like, I don't think it would even cross my mind. <laughs> Like genuinely, Ugh. no, it's gross. I I Ugh. no. Mm-mm. Okay, so now that my sidebar is done, coming back to the kettle conversation, EJ, what do you think about my position on this? I think you're sitting on the fence. You you do? I think you should say who's right and who's wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah, Shana, pick don't a be side. don't be lukewarm. <gasps> that was mean. It doesn't have to be if you choose a side. Mom and dad are fighting and they're making me choose. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is no, this is genuinely really hard because again, I've just never been in this position. But if you were. And if I know I'm like the type, if there's a bit of water left in there, I'm gonna dump it. Because I like to scald out the kettle with vinegar. So it would be dumped any like I'm not a good person for this. I'm gonna go with Freya. Ah, I knew it. Cause done. Moving on. Yeah, yeah race, I win. Racism. I'm calling it. Bro, you know, it, we're literally listen, both black. Listen, if your reasoning don't have to make sense, neither does mine. That's <laughs> racism we're talking about, though. I stand on it. Uh, Boy brief. Let's go. Pop Boy off, brief. woke king. I guess. Whatever. Boy I mean, brief. That's all that me. matters. <laughs> Okay, EJ. Um, here's your question. Sound like a sore loser. He is. Yo, well, I, <laughs> I, I don't like being the only guy in girls club. <laughs> Listen, you got to be able to handle the heat. Okay. I. This is not. Okay. It kind of is a question. Um, and I'll, so I'll just blurt it out, I guess. Does. <laughs> Does the term provider man or the concept of provider man read kind of toxic to you? Because it does to me sometimes. Provider man meaning the man provides? Okay, let me backtrack. Because yes, technically that is what that term is. Like a man who's providing. Um, But I'm thinking about it in the way that it's portrayed. And Priya, I know you know what I'm talking about. It's one thing. I don't think that being a man who provides for his family is toxic. Let me let me get that out of the way mm-hmm. in case there are any men of God listening. 
<laughs> and if I you smell like pine salt, da, yeah, let us know. points if you smell, smell like pine salt. Um, I'm gonna have a list of <laughs> a Shana checklist. <laughs> I'm crying at um, the top. Uh, yeah, right after after Under Love Jesus. <laughs> it's all, it's, it's, it's all P's too. Provide pine salt. Prayer. There Prayer could go. go first. Yeah. Mm. Um, where was I going? I got sidetracked by the men. Uh, <laughs> why am I like this? Health. Okay. I think that, yes, a man who provides for his family, I have no problem with. I think it's a beautiful thing. I, I love that, actually. My problem, or what I'm, and it's not really a problem, but I can't tell how I feel about it, is the way that I keep hearing, oh, is he like a provider man in social media? It's like a term. Interesting. It like like a label for somebody like oh like he's a provider man, um, and the reason I I don't know how I feel about it is because it's presented in this way. It's almost kind of like provider man equals alpha man, and alpha man is a weird thing. For so it's me. giving toxic masculinity. That's what. That's exactly it. And so I want to know just like what are what are the thoughts on that? Like, do we feel like provider man can actually kind of wind up being toxic? But is it men using this term or is it women using this term to describe a man? I think I, I never heard it is. Really? No. No, I think at this point it's just a general term. And you know what? Okay. I actually think a lot of this kind of stemmed from discourse on who's that podcaster and he's like really controversial. He'll bring a bunch of girls on and just like start laying down his opinions. He always wears sunglasses as though the sun is blaring him in his face. Um, Isn't there like a million of those podcasts? Yeah, yeah but he, I feel like he's specifically problematic and he just always has a lot to say about like men's roles, women's roles, yada, yada, yada. But I feel like a lot of discourse around him and his contact, content sorry, has kind of started to, I've been hearing more and more this idea of like, oh, okay, provider man and high value man tend to come oh. up a lot in tandem. Mm. Sorry, I'm going to go okay. puke now. And so, okay, so let's actually, with that being said, Basically, EJ, I just want your thoughts. This is not a direct question. I apologize. But I just kind of want your general thoughts on being a provider man, a high value man, and an alpha. Like, do you think that these things are all supposed to be in one package? Do you think that they can read toxic? And again, for the girlies, like, what's your big brother advice? That's, that's, that's good. I like this question. Thank you. Um, I'll start with alpha. Mm -hmm. I don't think alpha man is toxic. I don't think being an alpha man is toxic. I don't think there's anything wrong with being an alpha man, male, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it's just a a type. Mm -hmm. You just either are or you aren't. When it comes to alpha. Next one. So wait, no, hang on. Can you describe what you would view an alpha? Yeah, like what what do you mean when you say that? Uh, like describe what you mean. An alpha is a man who can command a room by his presence. Okay. It's not necessarily what he's saying it's not necessarily what he does i think alphas are are just that they are alphas and it's it's like it's an innate thing like i think we've all seen a group of people before and you could spot <laughs> the alpha and i'm not talking about the the guys who try to be the alpha mm-hmm. I'm talking about like a genuine like this person can just like you can tell that this person can lead well okay i was just gonna ask mm. are you are you basically saying leader. yeah like actual leadership qualities yes okay alphas tend to have leadership qualities alpha tend to uh i said the words let me check if i meant to say the word <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Let me consult myself real quick. <laughs> You're like, mm. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, al- no, alphas have leadership qualities. Okay. Let's keep in mind that a leader doesn't have to, like, you can have some quiet leaders. Yeah. Agreed. Fully. Exactly. So that's why 
that's where I went when you said that, like so they can, they can have those qualities. That's what I thought you meant. Like they have it, but are they using it in the leader way that everyone's looking for? So when I, when I say leader, I do not mean loud. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we might, I, we might think alpha means the loudest. Mm-hmm. That's not at all what I mean. Yeah. You said before, um, you know, you can tell someone's alpha or whatever by like, um, the way they command a room or whatever in terms of like, you know, what they say or whatever. But I also think that, or, or what they do, but I also think that it's very much, um, it can very much be the opposite. Like what you don't say mm-hmm. or what you don't do. Yeah. So I think alpha is your character. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can spot an alpha in times of, um, I don't know if turmoil is the word I'm looking for. Distress. Distress, maybe. In a time of not great things, <laughs> right? An alpha can stand on his own. An alpha mm-hmm. can stand on his own principles. An alpha can decide his own principles. Um, and an alpha is okay being alone in those principles. Mm-hmm. Integrity comes a lot with... Nah, that's not the word I'm looking for because a beta can have integrity. Mm, I see. But I think alpha just means I just lead well. I lead by my presence. When I'm around other men, they tend to just f- either look to me, follow me, uh, look up to me kind of thing. This is you describing the characteristics of mm-hmm. alpha? Yes. Okay. And alpha does not mean good or bad. Mm-hmm. You could have bad men that are alphas, and you could also have good men that okay. are alphas. I think it's legit just a, a type. It's a, it's a demeanor you have, or you don't. Hmm. Do you think, or I, I basically, I know the answer that I think to this, but just for further thoughts, I think part of the reason I get, not to deter from the previous question that's on the table, but sometimes the term, alpha male can give me the ick because 100%. I feel like if you have to tell me you're an alpha male, you're not an alpha baby. You're not. Mm-hmm. But I think that's part of it. Don't you though? Like if you have to tell people, you know what it kind of reminds me of? Mm-hmm. It kind of reminds me of like, like the joke about the person who's like screaming and crying and yelling, but what they're screaming and crying and yelling is, I'm not mad. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, so what are you? Yeah, you are. Like to me when it's like that in terms of this conversation, like if you have to be like out here doing the most to convince somebody (laughs) that you're alpha or whatever, then I I, I agree with that statement. And I actually don't think an alpha would ever tell somebody they're an alpha. Okay. I'm glad we, an an alpha kind of knows. I just don't think he'd need that validation from anyone. He doesn't. It, I, I equate it to the guy that knows how to fight and the guy that doesn't. The guy that knows how to fight is not walking around saying, I can beat you up. It's the guy that doesn't know how to fight that's trying to fight everybody. You know? So weird. Uh, I, I, it's the same as... Way too much testosterone. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the same as uh, the, the guy in the relationship who tells his girl to submit to him. Yeah. If you have to tell your person to submit to you, then you're not worthy of submitting to. You don't really have to tell people certain Amen things. To that. Cer- certain things you don't have to tell people. Yeah. When you are, certain things just fall in line. Yes. And alphas, yeah. It just falls in line. You don't gotta, you don't have to convince nobody you're an alpha. You just are. Okay. Okay. I'm satisfied. What was, the next, the what was the next one? It was alpha and then... We said alpha, provider, man, and high value man. Sorry, wait. To just pause one more thing. Okay. So you would say that being an alpha male is not inherently toxic? No. But if you misuse it, would you say that? Then it can be toxic? Or how, like, what, how would you... Because I just know for a lot of people, when when you initially hear the words alpha male, the first thing that comes to your mind is, ew. 
like toxic. Uh, you know what's funny? I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. And I realized that, that that maybe could be like a. Those could maybe just be like triggering words. Perception like, is not reality. That's it. I think they're triggering words because yeah. I. Like I don't when I hear it used like it makes me want to roll my eyes a bit, especially depending on who's doing the talking. Yes. Agreed. But if you were to ask me, like, would you like an alpha male? I'd be like, yes, please. <laughs> like that's you know what I mean? Like, it, why not? I, I, I think it falls. And I'll use this term again, the submit thing. You say the word submit to most women today. There's a, <laughs> a hesitation. Yeah. Or like a, a, a guard that goes right up right away. 100%. But I'll ask you to. What is like, do you see anything inherently wrong with submission in terms of how the Bible describes it? No. Exactly. In terms of how the Bible describes because, it. Because usually we're, we're talking, usually it's in the see, context. See, I think even, sorry, even in that, I think people might have a problem just because we have not defined how the Bible describes it. And I think that there's a lot of people out there who um, understand the Bible to be very like, um, toxic in a patriarchal sense as in women are less than okay i'm not talking to them though oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> I sorry I about you <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm speaking from the perspective i'm speaking from the stance of a christian yeah. who i have a reverence for the bible i believe the bible to be true but even though i do i still have an issue with this word submit mm-hmm. okay that's that's the audience in the room that i'm speaking with which sidebar at some point we will dive into submission so that everyone can then become on the same (laughs) yeah to to just to just be clear exactly that does not mean lower yourself or diminish yourself or or that's exactly we have to get into that or whatever we're we're not going to go into it but that exactly no i know i'm just saying but that's exactly my point about alpha yeah alpha in itself is not a toxic thing Mm -hmm. but i do think there have just been people who are alphas who kind of just ruined it for everyone else ruined the perception of it for everyone else so so it has a bad perception when you talk about it or think about it right but what it actually is it just is (laughs) yeah okay all right and so sorry what was the the current question that you had asked I don't know if you fully gave your answer because we got distracted. No, she did. You, you, you asked did? me if, if, I, if I believe it was toxic. No, oh, you okay. asked the thing about submission. And was it just to prove that point or sorry? Sorry. Yeah. Did yeah, you that, have further just, to go with that? No, that was just to prove my point. Okay, gotcha. Or to explain my point. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Basically, yeah. You, you hear the word submission. You guys will probably react in a certain way. Yeah. But if we ask you how you actually feel about it in context, you're not going to have an issue with it. Mm-hmm. That's my point. Okay. Um, next two provider man so this is a new one for me I've never heard this term but I can um, assume what what it in entails yeah uh, I don't think there's anything toxic <laughs> with a man who provides I think a man should provide I think men innately want to provide so if you have a man who's doing these things I see no issue with it now, again, if through your provision, you are now putting yourself in a place of uh, lordship. <laughs> That's a great word. <laughs> because mm-hmm. I'm providing. So now you have to be subservient to me or you have to do for me because I'm providing. That, that is toxic. But again, just in itself of what it is no it's not toxic Mm. okay as you were talking i'm I'm like processing and i think one of the reasons provider man came up in like a weird way is that provider man comes up a lot with the trad woman trend which is like a traditional wife tradition i heard i heard that that one okay i heard that one (laughs) And just the idea as well and the idea of if if I live with a provider man, I it's almost like you can't do anything but 
just take care of like just be a homemaker which i want to preface like homemakers are brilliant homemaking is a full-time job 100 percent. and it, i think it's very beautiful but um almost like i okay i've heard this in the context of like guys saying to women like yeah i think it's great that you have a career um but like i'm a provider man so if like if we end up together like just know like it's not that important and i think it can be toxic in this age again we're not in bible times like women get married later all these things happen and it's like are you supposed to just sit there and wait for your provider man and not do anything so we go to school or we go learn a trade or we go do whatever it is that we did to make money and and like find purpose honestly and then they come into your life this provider man which is not inherently bad but then it's this idea of okay, like great job building yourself up all these years, but stop. Sometimes that's the energy it gives. And I think when you pair it with the traditional wife trend, mm-hmm. I'll call it, because it it's kind of like come back up in a trend. It's weird. Like it's yeah. a thing, but it it's like trending. Um, I think that there's this weird interaction. Do you know what I'm saying, Priya? Yeah, so you're saying the the concept of a man providing is a great thing. But the attitude towards it is what I'm is potentially about. unhealthy or, or problematic. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. Or like the approach taken to be that yes. kind of a guy is potentially problematic. Yeah. I'll say it like this. Yes. The meaning behind it, not toxic. But if we're just talking about this trend phrase you're speaking about, I would say it's toxic because it only it 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 it, it seems like it's exclusive to finances. And part of provision is not just finances. Mm-hmm. There's emotional uh security, there's a whole plethora <laughs> of other types of ways you need to provide Mm -hmm. for your person and your family that is not just finances. However, I do think as a man with a family, you should get to a point where your wife can has a choice to whether she says, I would like to stay home and we be okay. Cool. That's an interesting. I provide enough to where you can choose that but also like if you don't but you're providing everything else and you are teaming up in the household chores like there's so much to providing and it's not just finances so so the 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 what's the word stance take whatever it is um of I'm providing financially so now you have to be a homemaker and give up your career I think is toxic I would call it toxic masculinity I hate that term but I would call it that but I also think if a man was providing all the things like let's say he was doing everything well provision I would I would put money that majority in a percentage wise of women mm. would choose to kick it at home. They wouldn't Can have you... to. I'm not saying they would have to. But I think if if they had the man who was providing financially, emotionally, and all that stuff that he's supposed to be doing, I think she's gonna be like, you know what? I'll take care of the kids. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think she's going to have an issue with it. I think the issue comes when he's telling her she has to. To be clear, if you're a stay at home mom with kids, you're not just kicking it <laughs> at home. <laughs> Yo, I thought it was saying, but so, I, understand. I thought it was saying it so well. No, I understand and what here you're you go talking about now. <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> 
I'm just saying. <laughs> I just, I think that this, this could, and so I don't want to go in this direction per se, but I think that this would open up a whole other conversation on um, just industriousness in women mm-hmm. and that being sniffed out or, mm-hmm. or cultivated. And then, yeah. Because yes, if you have somebody who is wholly provided for you, and I say this knowing full, I love my career, um, but if I was in a position where I was married and my husband did make enough for us to, I'm not really sure what I would do, but I would appreciate that he did that. And I would never be resentful towards him that he was able to provide for us. Um, I think that's a blessing. You know, and sure. Financially in terms of me staying home, Mm -hmm. but I mean, in every sense of the word, because if I only feel provided for financially, I don't feel provided for. Like I just don't. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, but the idea, I think where it can get convoluted is again, this idea, like you just clarified, okay, like kicking it at home, like you're doing things. But um, again, I just, I think that speaks to the industriousness of women. Like, would you, let's say you're a wife. I'm not even gonna get into momhood because that is two full-time jobs straight up. Um, But let's say you're a wife. You don't have kids yet. And your husband is able to fully provide for you. I don't think you being that, wife that like stays at home and just does um you know things around i don't want to say just does that because again like i feel like i i don't know how to phrase this because i do actually think homemaking like i watched my mom be a homemaker Mm -hmm. it is hard um and she did a lot and she went above and beyond too so like with that in mind but just the idea that oh she's just at home like getting her nails done and like not doing anything i think that can be sometimes where even men's minds go when there's a lot involved on both sides, but we're just talking about you don't have to be in the workforce in terms of financial piece. Well, I think then we have to get into a conversation about like the value of just people, but specifically women. Yes. And like inherent value. Like what is your value beyond what you can do? But I also think it's interesting. You said, you know, like you're just like a stay at home wife, whatever. And so you like just go and get your nails done. But I feel like if we're talking about this in like the toxic sense that a lot of the times these conversations are had with, if you have the toxic dude with the toxic provider man mindset, you know, macho toxic masculinity kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And he wants to be the guy bringing home the money so that he can feel like I'm that guy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and so he wants his wife to stay home. Then like, to me, he would want his wife to be going out and like just getting her hair done and just getting her nails done. Because in his mind, the value that she's bringing to the table is her appearance. Mm. Right. So then it's if in that sense, it's like, well, she's not just getting her hair done and not just getting her nails done and whatever. Like she's doing what you would want her to be doing in this specific situation. So you can't like say it's a bad thing, but then also it's a good thing because that's the expectation that you know how have of her. Do, do you know what I mean? Does that yeah, does I that make what you're sense? Saying, I do. Does that make sense? Kind of. How not? I don't know. Okay. I think I think I get it. Mm-hmm. I think for me personally, if if I'm providing all of our income and we don't have kids. The only thing I really expect in terms of like house work is that the house is just not dirty. <laughs> That's really it. Mm-hmm. If we have like, like other than that, you can go do whatever you want, whatever your heart desires. I, I don't expect it to be like, oh, I'm providing so you can go get your nails. Like, if you want to go, like, if you have a, a a passion of yours and you say, you know what? I would love to go get my degree in X, Y, Z. Go to school. Go. If, if you say, I want to start a YouTube channel, go start a YouTube. Like, go do whatever. You have the freedom to choose whatever it is you want to do. Once kids come and if I'm providing all the money, then I expect you to be taking care of the kids when I'm at work. Hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then once the kids come, I don't expect the house to be pristine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
like expectations. I I just think, I think I think we all have a little bit of unrealistic expectations on both sides. I'm not going to police what you do. I'm going to feel great if I can provide all of our money. That's a flex. <laughs> yeah, but I think about I think that I'm like speaking specifically in like the toxic sense where it's like the guy who wants to be able to flex and say that because you, like that's you, like the version of himself in his life that he's like trying to portray and it's more about himself and so being able to say that like yeah like I'm all these things I'm that guy I'm rich I'm whatever and I'm married and have a hot wife like as in like that like she's just like the accessory to like his grand life that he's trying to portray that he has I think you know what if, I mean? does that, did that I think I think I think what I'm saying if you married a toxic man you probably have some toxic in you I don't know if I. I don't. I don't think, think I'm willing to agree with that 100. percent Really? Yeah. Really? How not? Um, because sometimes I'm not, I'm not saying dating. I'm saying married to. Yes. Yeah, I know. Okay. I guess I'm thinking about what about those situations where. Okay, let's say you're a woman is dating somebody. Mm-hmm. Everything seems great. They're like not obviously nothing can ever be perfect so it's not like oh my gosh she's made no mistakes ever but there's little things that she might attribute to oh with more maturity or like we'll work that out i think girls do that a lot there's i think like that's the potential toxic. mindset but okay mm, i'm i'm more talking about like she's dating this person recognizing that neither of them are perfect okay i'm not talking about her trying to fix things but i'm just saying that like acknowledging oh there's these things but he's not perfect neither am i we're both committed to growing and working and whatever they get married and he takes his mask off because i hear this Mm -hmm. all the time i hear this so much um he takes his mask off and he's just a different human than the person she married she was not toxic in entering that marriage she thought it was a good thing and then he just flipped a switch and so in situations like that, and I get that that's an extreme case, but that's why I'm saying I don't agree with the idea that if you end up in a toxic relationship, it's because a part of you is also toxic. I think you can end up in situations and the other person starts behaving a certain way and you're like blindsided. Agreed. Personally, I don't like that take. No okay. I don't like it because it, it puts all problems on the man and it doesn't really leave any room for accountability on the other side but to be clear though that doesn't just happen in the case of men it happens for there women are, too yeah there are there are couples who get married and the the wife the woman is like that yes the mask comes off for her and she's all of a sudden not who she this, said she was this person yeah that she led him to believe that she was and portrayed herself to be and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think that it's just one thing or like just, it's just not one a man way. problem. I don't know. I don't know. This maybe, is a maybe, purple maybe, problem. It's not like, a pink problem. We're a yeah. blue problem. Like, like maybe, maybe personally, because I just don't operate like that. Praise God. And I would never <laughs> like my vetting process. <laughs> <laughs> for who I would date. Even to the point of like, I just I just think the point of marriage, like, I just, I don't understand how. So it's hard for me to empathize with that scenario. Because to me, if you got to the point of marriage and then they all of a sudden switch, there's a lot of stuff that you missed before saying yes and i do but i think then we have to talk about one why were those things missed because they could be missed because one you saw the red flags and you chose to ignore them which would be or sure or you could be in a situation where you grew up and um relationships were not talked about openly how to be in a healthy relationship was not talked about what to look for what to watch out for was not talked about and so there were certain things that you did not notice um 
Because you didn't know that you should notice them. Which would mean you're a byproduct of toxicity. Okay. And like sin. But that's very different than saying you that you. you yourself are toxic and so you ended up in this situation. Nah. I think I I think Or like or like you're like playing an active role in your toxicity. <laughs> but that's two different things. Having a, some toxicity in you and you playing an active role in it are separate. Points. I think that's my point. But that's but that's not reality. Like Okay. Crack babies, it's not their fault, but <laughs> still cracked out. I'm not following. What a weird analogy. Like <laughs> somebody if, help Shayna. <laughs> if 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 you come from a toxic family, right? And and let me let me clarify what I mean by toxic. I don't mean the crazy like I'm throwing like People are fighting and, and throwing things and breaking things and name calling. I'm not talking about like the extreme level of toxicity. I'm talking about like just toxic mindsets, certain things overlooked. It's almost like generational toxic. <laughs> Can we say toxic is synonymous with unhealthy? Yes. Okay. That's, that's what I Because I think mean. the word toxic is tripping us up because for you to say like, oh, somebody's in a situation and they ignored a sign or they thought it was okay that that's toxic. It was just an unhealthy thought pattern that they were in. Like mm -hmm. toxic gives the idea of it was manipulative mm -hmm. and or it was cantankerous or like something of that. Kind. Okay. So toxic feels like it's on a different level than unhealthy to me. Yes. To me, you have unhealthy and then you have toxic. Toxic is like the unhinged version. Okay. Then That's in, what it feels like. Then, then in that case, everything I said that was toxic, I'm referring to as unhealthy. Okay. Okay. Even the husband who might think certain things he wants from his wife because he's providing. I don't necessarily consider that person toxic. They might just be have an unhealthy mindset. So what would have to happen for it to cross the line in that specific example from unhealthy to toxic? Well, like Shana said, manipulativeness. Would you say cantankerous? Cantankerous. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but it sounds fire. <laughs> <laughs> EJ's word of the day. I, I, <laughs> I've, I've heard my grandma say it. It's a very Caribbean word. With the, with the Patois accent. <laughs> That's oh why I gosh. like it. <laughs> even better. Um, yeah, I, th I think the motive. If, if, if the motive is... Motive, okay. If the motive is I provide the finances... And I just want you to be my arm candy. That is toxic. But if the motive is I'm providing. So I, ex I expect you to be at home. I don't think that's toxic. I don't think that necessarily comes from a toxic place. It might just be an unhealthy level of reality and expectations. Okay. Right. So to my first point, I think if you marry into somebody who has unhealthy. um expectations of reality then you probably on your own end have some unhealthy things too because usually if you're healthy you can spot the unhealthy like I, I don't feel like it just you mean usually if you're healthy you can spot the unhealthy yes okay yeah you know you can spot problems when you're healthy but i think if you have your own unhealth it might blind you to somebody else's and then you end up in this situation of just pure unhealth, which can develop into toxicity. Okay. Because okay. I think where my problem was is that the reason why I was unwilling to just like accept the statement that you were making is that like I know people um, who like got married and thought that they were like, like this was like a really good thing, you know, and Kingdom then marriage. Yeah. And then like Shayna said, you know, Flip the mask side. came off after they got married and they found themselves in like a toxic, um, abusive marriage. Mm -hmm. But like knowing this person, I know that they weren't like, you know, insanely toxic themselves and deciding to just like overlook red flags and like, oh, whatever, I'm going to marry him anyway. Like, I, so that's, I think, why I was unwilling to just like agree with you on that. But if we're using the word unhealthy and mm. we're 
then disqualifying like cases like that then I might be more willing to agree with you. I, I would just say I only have one exception in which I entirely disagree with you and I'll explain okay. it in a second. But for me, the, the crossover between unhealthy to toxic is when your unhealthy circumstances or mindset or behavior patterns um, start to become maladaptive to you. What does that mean? Maladaptive is like they're, they're hurtful or impeding in some way in your life. So it's one thing to have an unhealthy thought pattern, but it's another for it to cross over to this place where it has become a hindrance. Like everyone every once in a while thinks, ah, dang, like I, I'm unworthy. I could do better. That's a thought. That was an unhealthy thought. And you could take that thought captive. When it turns into this festering of, oh yeah, I'm unhealthy, or sorry, not I'm unhealthy. I'm unworthy, I'm unworthy, I'm unworthy. And you start behaving and operating as though you're unworthy that's when it has crossed over and it is now a maladaptive behavior. It's unhelpful. It's actually hurting you. That's when I say things become toxic. And I think that can apply across the board for any situation. Mm -hmm. But my one situation where I think I entirely disagree is in the case of people with narcissistic personality disorder. Mm. Because, and like, there's so many facts to back this up. Like, that person, you, they will mask and do it exceptionally well for so long until one day they just get tired of it. And usually by then people are locked and loaded in their marriage. How common is that? It's actually really common. Like actually, like actually diagnosed. It's common. I mean, percentage. I don't have percentages for you. No. I think that's a good question because I feel like narcissism is one of the wor- those like buzzwords. That's an that overused just gets, like, word. Thrown around like, oh, like he's like so narcissistic, but it's like. Well, there's narcissistic qualities and tendencies. Right. But there's but that's a very actually different. narcissism mm-hmm. in which, and that like to define it, it's like, yeah, they mask. They, yeah. they see somebody, they want something out of them. They behave in a certain way to ensure that that's going to be able to happen. And then they drop the act. So I, I think that people, men and women, because you can have a man who's a narcissistic and a woman who's a narcissistic easily, mm-hmm. but you can end up in a situation where you thought you were getting one thing and then one day they literally are just not like that. So I wouldn't even say just in narcissism, but in, I feel like I slurred that I am sober. Um, but just in general, as like any mental health condition could actually end up attributing to something like that. And again, that's no one's fault. Like we live in a world of sin, like these things happen, but I don't think it's fair to say in every situation you had a bit of unhealth or a bit of toxicity and you two end up in that situation. Agreed. Yeah. Cause then I feel like it kind of blurs the line and then like maybe we're kind of getting into like victim blaming, which like I'm super not right. Therefore willing yeah. to get into that. Yeah. yeah. Like But I also don't think everyone's a victim. And I do I do find that to be a common thing nowadays. Everyone's a victim and no, like accountability yeah. is not that common. But I don't think you were trying to imply that everyone's a victim, though. I'm saying that to what oh, you no, just no, said. No. I'm saying that to your point just now. Oh. oh. Like in, in the same way, we don't want a victim blame. On the flip side, everyone's not a victim. But OK, I don't. I think victim blaming is almost like a term. If you will. How do I describe this? And victim blaming is hard because it feels, and this is, this might just be me, it feels like that doesn't apply to men. I know we're, I ta- I know we're talking about men and women, mm-hmm. but I feel like the victim blaming thing is usually called out when spoken about when the woman is in said victim mm. um, position. I, I agree. I do think that there tends to be uh, really unfortunate, toxic, if you will, double standard when it comes to certain things pertaining to like relationships and mental health and like well being and all. Even that just being stuff. a dude, I was at the gym. I told you the story. I got followed around the gym by these girls. I was so uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I hate that for you. I'm yeah. sorry. But what am I supposed to do? Say nothing? 
-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Say nothing. It was so uncomfortable. Right, but if that was happening to a girl at the gym, it'd be a problem. But we we see thing. that all the time in celebrity culture, and I know we're getting off topic, so I'll be quick. But <laughs> in celebrity culture, we see this all the time. I I saw a video on TikTok the other day. I forget what celebrity it was, but Justin Bieber at the time was like sixteen, and she basically made a joke about how she groped him mm -hmm. when giving him a hug because it's I've like it. it's Justin Bieber. Like, how could you not? And she, you're like forty. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? And I think obviously if that was a man and it was a girl, people would have flamed that person. And I, I disagree with that. I don't think that that should be let, like women should not be able to let stuff like that slide. Agreed. Like, so yeah, I'm with you guys on that. There is a double standard. EJ, I'm sorry that happened. I know that must've made you really uncomfortable. I was, I texted Priya. I was like, Priya, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. That really sucks. Yeah, it was awkward. Yeah. So awkward. No, men, men's experiences with that or like sexual assault or so many different things. It is so valid. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing, <laughs> like I will always say that, like it is valid and a man should never feel less than because something like that happened or feel like maybe that isn't what it was. Call it for what it is. Say it with your chest. It is that. Mm -hmm. And it's wrong. Mm -hmm. To your last okay. point. Yes. High value man. High value man. Oh yeah, that one. I mm. understand it. And again, fundamentally, I agree with it. Mm -hmm. But I also think a lot of these terms these days, there's so much that comes with it that I don't like. Yeah. Um, I think intrinsically, it's a big word for me. I love the word intrinsically. Intrinsically, I think we are all high value people. Yes. According to the, cre the creator who created us. Well, we're made in his image. Right? <laughs> so we are all high value. However, the term high value man or become high value man, it kind of, it makes, it makes a man feel as though I'm not. And, and the only way for me to be valuable is what I can provide for somebody else. Right? Now, Fundamentally, being a high value man, like it's a it's a good thing for men to strive for in the sense of like, yeah, figure out ways to be financially stable, figure out ways to be healthy, you know, look good, like all those like we all want to be those things. There's nothing wrong with those things. But I think the term in itself, it creates a sense of like, I'm not high value if I don't have xyz in my bank account if i don't look like whatever celebrity if i'm not built like michael b jordan and and in the in the chase of that i think you get toxic masculinity right and then add in like fresh and fit and the guys who coined these phrases that's what i think of yeah. like it just makes me want to like the guys, the guys who Ugh. made these phrases popular Gag. are, they don't, <laughs> yeah, they're high value men in the terms of social media, you know? Yeah. And, but, but like, that's where it stops. But that's where it stops. Mm -hmm. But also there's nobody to really differentiate between where it stops and reality. So you have people in reality trying to be what they see on social media as a high value man, but what they're describing as a high value man is like 1%. The percentage of that person is so small, right? And, you're, and everybody's chasing this 1% and it doesn't make sense. So out of all the terms we talked about today, I hate that one the most. Mm, I agree. But I do think all men should be ch trying to, striving to be men of high value in that sense. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cash only too. You should be striving for that. Strive for financial um you already are a high value man that's yes. what i wanted to say period you are you because you're but, valuable yeah you already are a high value man because you are a person created in the image of god and therefore you have intrinsic value yes. full stop but what you're saying is there's nothing wrong with um along with that along with that knowledge and in that identity pursuing things like i'm going to take care of myself 
physically and I'm going to figure out how to take care of my finances properly and I'm yeah. going to and you, figure you out know. how to provide for my family, figure out how to um, make my, my wife, my girl, like be attracted, attractive to her, all those things. Right. But they are secondary to the fact that period you are the high value. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is why if somebody killed you, they go to jail <laughs> because mm -hmm. your life has value. <laughs> Yeah. You are high value. Yeah. So that just sounds at this point like a, I guess, an integrity thing. Like, are you working on your integrity? Are you working towards building yourself up in that way? But yeah, again, you're already valuable. But all of these things just make me think, again, they're not, none of them are inherently bad. I have nothing against an alpha man. I have nothing against any of these things. But like, yeah, it's just, as a package, it creates. It, it can be read the wrong way. And I think that, yeah, just the value that the world puts on it rather than what it was inna like innately supposed to be when you were created is very different. Mm -hmm. um, and then so to wrap it up, I guess my <sighs> question, I'd asked your like big brother advice, but I would want that. But I'm curious like what you would have to say to guys and what you might have to say to girls. Uh. Do you have something though? No, I was just going to say like, I just think that it's worth noting mm -hmm. that to me, at least from what I've seen, like send me an example if this is not true <laughs> exclusively, like please. Run the receipts. Yeah. But to me, I see the term high value man exclusively being used by unhealthy, toxic, if you will people and in toxic spaces exclusively i do not hear that term at all being used by anybody who um i can show you an example is a like healthy you think so i, I know mav my my mentor yeah he uses that term mm. but because of him and me knowing him and and the discipleship from him mm -hmm. he in a sense, is trying to actually treat, turn that term into what it's supposed to be, which is not, you are a high value man if you do X, Y, Z. Right. So but, I wouldn't count but, that though. But no, but that is what it is though. You're saying, show me someone else. Right. But what he's doing is actually, hey, high value man, come live how you're supposed because to Because you're high value. Yes. Not, right. You can become not a high value man. Not to be high man, value. But hey, high value man, I'm addressing you. Yeah. Come, let me show you how to live the way God has called you to. Which is, which is great. All right? of these are just love that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I think, see, it gets deep when you actually think about it deeply. It's, it's, it's the devil just taking principles, taking principles of, of how God has called us to live and saying, hey, let me just skew Warp it just it a, a little bit, bit mm -hmm. because it sounds good. And fundamentally, it is good, mm -hmm. right? But if I can skew it just a little bit to where you're not seeing it the way it's supposed to, then it becomes something completely different. Right. And then altogether, it's toxic. But none of those things inherently are bad. As a matter of fact, I think all those things are what men are supposed to do. You want to be a good leader. You want to provide for your family. You want to... Um, uh, yeah. Well, then provide all these things that we deem as a high value man when it's just providing right you want to be able to be in a place where you can provide if you're physically fit you'll feel confident about yourself if you're confident about yourself chances are you're not going to be putting certain things onto your girl right if you're financially stable you're confident <laughs> if you're confident you can provide a living for your wife Right? All these things are what we're supposed to do as men. But packaged right now, it's, it's in a almost like against women kind of way or mm -hmm. in spite of women kind of way. When you should just be doing it because you are a high value man and this is what high value men are called to do. Period. The Snaps end. Ooh, I got a snap. Let's go. The end. Yeah. High value man, man of God, they're synonyms to me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the world has counterfeited it. Yeah. 100%.
I love so, that. So my advice yes. to the men would be get off the internet. <laughs> for real. Um, find some... If you're, if you're a Christian, find some men in your church who are beyond you mm. in terms of life. Step number one, get into a church. Get into a church. Always. Um, but once you're in that church, find some men who are beyond you in life who can disciple you mm-hmm. properly, right? And then ask God for discernment on if these men are the right men to be discipling you. That's what I would say to the guys. The girls uh, do the same thing with women because chances are women who are with men who are doing it right can guide you in how to be, you know? So my advice to everybody is discipleship. (laughs) Get in a church, find people who are beyond you, who can walk you through life on how to do it properly and get off the internet. Except when this pot is on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hmm. All right. Mic drop. We love it. That's it. Anything else? Priya? What about the, like, what about, like, to the girls, like, what to look for? I can't, I can't tell you that over a pod. Hmm. what to look for you're gonna you're gonna have to be around men who exhibit what to look for <laughs> because you because, will I, know it because, when you because, see it because <laughs> no not not you'll know it when you see it but if you're around it you'll understand it that's helpful and yet so unhelpful <laughs> i know i know because because what can i say like find a man who loves jesus yes <laughs> check find a man who um has a work ethic, okay? Like all these things I'm gonna say are easy to say, but you gotta see somebody doing it in like real time to understand the nuances of what it's supposed to look like. Okay, there it is, yeah. Versus Mm -hmm. the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think something that's gonna keep coming up throughout our episodes is just the idea of by your fruits you shall know them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, or by their fruits, sorry, you shall know them. I, the Bible knows what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. And that is probably the most, some of the most practical advice. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to know how to do something, get around it and and see it as much as possible. Again, discipleship. Just so powerful. And read your Bible. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And and you'll you'll grow, 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 grow. Hey, no, okay. (laughs) On that note, (laughs) take us out of here. On that note, okay, everybody, (laughs) right? We're done. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Um, If you want to listen to Big Girl Panties, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us anywhere you stream your podcasts. All that information is in the show notes. Uh, To find Priya, EJ, or myself, our socials are also in the show notes. Um, anything you need is in the show notes, really. So EJ may not want to be found. Nah. Okay, well then his won't be in the show notes. I'm trying, to, to, I'm, tr- I'm trying to be a power not, couple, guys. Oh my god, crying. He's not that hard to find, though. Um, but I'll, I'll leave you all to that. Anyway, so that's that. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, stay courageous, stay faithful, keep embracing the journey, and don't get your panties in a bunch. Bye, oh, guys. a snap! Yeah. Snap. Okay.